Racing in store here for you on this wonderful Monday night is it's the ISRC Larry Arts Productions Truck Series as they head to the Tricky Triangle here in Pocono, Pennsylvania for race number nine of the season. It's the spring break at the Tricky Triangle, presented by Serenity Skate Sense. Serenity Skate Sense, your local hometown business specializing in crafting handmade, unique, and whims- whimsical car freshies and wax melts use code isrc15 for 15 percent off at uh from serenity scapes and you'll be able to get yourself some nice wax melts and car freshies there so thank you to serenity scapes for sponsoring tonight as they'll also have a little bit of a game going on with the paint schemes out there for the top paint scheme winning a prize from them so congrats to whoever wins that tonight but it's going to be a fun one on here on the store race number nine like i said three races that go in the regular season including tonight so it's going to get very much on the line here at Pocono as these drivers look to tackle a track that personally can set up a wild race in store for us known to keep everybody right in tow in the draft very much a huge powerful product of everything but tonight my name is Zach Hall joined alongside me it's going to be Robert Moyer Jr. as Tonight, Sam Dyer is not going to be in the booth list as normal, but shout out to Sam out there as uh, we're going to be duoing it here with our producer, Robert Moyer Jr., and me and him are going to get him very much involved. But we're going to go ahead and step to track side action here at Pocono and see what these drivers are doing as we got about two minutes left here in this practice session. And I think the one thing that stands out more than anything when we see the shot with a few drivers uh Having a little bit of fun here on the front straightaway is the view of the weather. It looks very, very foggy, and I believe this is due to the humidity being a huge factor here tonight as we're going to pop up that weather. You're going to see 93% humidity, so very high humidity out there, a ton of moisture in the air. That's going to take away horsepower. That's going to make the track a little bit more slick even. That's going to make everything, I think, that much more fun for us up here in the booth with that 17-mile-an-hour wind, too, so very windy and a very tricky condition here to go along with the tricky triangle but it's going to be a fun night for sure is like i said i got robert moyer jr up in the booth with me and it's going to be always a pleasure to hear his thoughts and sounds on how it plays out here at this two and a half mile track of a beast as we're gonna have robert moyer step up here with us and robert i'm telling you what man i think tonight with the weather here it could be a very interesting one yeah, very interesting. It could be also very uh, wet with the humidity, especially, you know, at 93%. Holy mackerel. You can just see it on the track there, Zach. It's it's a lot of humidity. And now we're going into the overview here as we get ready to roll into qualifying. You can see it. it sun came out a little bit, but wow. I mean, there's a lot of humidity floating around in the sky, which will affect the trucks, will affect the way the trucks drive and how they handle that it will you're gonna see a haze like fog almost over this track as it's a very interesting scenario here for a lot of the drivers as they're now going to be heading out for their qualifying conditions five minutes here see who could put down the two best laps to produce the fastest time and i think track position is going to be a huge thing here just due to really in my opinion being a very tough track to pass so We'll see um, how this works out. We're going to watch Nick Crawford here in the 74 machine as he's going to look to get it done here tonight as it's been a up and down season for him. It seems like it's either been a, a win or the strategy just hasn't went the way. So we'll see how he can play it out here tonight as his teammates, the Snowy Desert Racing, they've looked very good also. Yeah, they look very good too. Um, but to talk about Nick Crawford, like you said, he had the up and down so far this season here. Um, he does have a win under his belt, you know, but Nick is that type of driver we watch week in and week out, Zach, that he's always the type that it does them 
dual strategy risky moves where you scratch your head going, I don't understand what you're doing, but by the end of the race you go, well, that worked out. And here with Pocono, that could be one of the things because Pocono, depending on how the yellows fall, can come down to a fuel mileage race. So you're going to see guys playing different strategies, but again, that's all going to depend on how the yellows go, you know, how the yellows fly and when they fly and things like that. You're exactly right, Robert. Those yellow flags are going to be critical to that fuel strategy because talking to a few drivers coming into tonight, it is right on the edge of that stage break at lap 30 of making fuel. So some drivers are saying 30, they're good there. Some drivers are saying maybe even 31. So, you know, with that playing out that way with the, where the, the caution is going to fall at the stage break, we could see uh, caution be a huge factor if we get around that timing of, you know, 32, 33 laps to go. We need to watch out for a fuel strategy definitely being a case as the first few times are starting to click through. And the man we got on screen, that Las Vegas uh, truck to the top of the board there, Robert. Yeah, and that's a different paint scheme. You said earlier, you know, they're, everybody's going to be trying to uh, got a different paint scheme for the, for the the giveaway here tonight so you can see he's from las vegas everybody so he painted himself up a las vegas uh you know truck which is uh very different i must say seeing that uh no number on the side with the number being on the back but that's that's a nice thing about i racing you can uh you can fine tune you know your trucks to your likings and you can put decals wherever you want it is robert it is the beauty of i racing we can build these trucks and these paint schemes is many different ways as we like, and definitely a lot of creativity there coming out. But as we were talking about it, Jared Talmadge, he stole the top of the board there. And we'll see, did Nick Crawford pick up on the second lap? No, no okay. pickup on the second lap. So it seems like the first laps may be the quickest as most are not finding speed on the second lap. So first lap, very surprising to me, but I think that could be mainly a factor, Robert, due to the size of this racetrack, two and a half miles in length. It does take a good bit of wear and tear on the tires, especially with the high amounts of speed to carry. Well, you know, I was thinking here tonight, you know, with uh, knowing I had to commentate here tonight with you, Zach. I, today, I was thinking in my head, how can I explain how Pocono is in the way I feel it, it runs? You know, you you get a, you know, you got to get that run going down into turn one. And we all know turn two, if you don't hit it right, that is the trickiest part of the track. But if you get through turn two and you got that figured out, you carry all that speed down to three. And as long as you keep that speed up going through three and you go down to, you know, cross start finish line, go down into one and you do it over again. Great. You're going to have a good lap. And if you can do that over and over, you're going to have, you know, you're going to be up into the top five, possibly leading the race. But, you know, the thing with that is, is if you miss one turn here, it takes two laps to get back to speed that that one turn that you just blew that lap from. You just don't pick it back up again. You basically got to reset and go back around again and try to try to hit them markings again. So, you know, if people keep messing up over and over and over in one, two or three, you know, because as there is no turn four. You know, they could get multiple laps so they actually get their fastest lap, but then you lose so much time. It, it is really a interesting track, to say the least. That is for sure. And, you know, I think it's going to play a very interesting role tonight as the five-minute wow. clock has just went up. And look at that. To the top and stayed there was Jarrett Talmadge. So the 10 on pole. Now we're going to switch on over to a five-minute warm-up of these drivers. Get ready to get prepared for tonight's race, Robert. But I tell you what, Jared Thomas on pole, that is a fantastic job from a driver who really needed that because I think when we get to look in here at the points soon, he is uh, going to be on the outside looking in coming tonight of those you know playoff positions and only three races to go. It may take a win. Yeah, I think so. Three races to go, it might be so. But we'll look at the, the standings here with three races to go here. As you do got, you know, if we look over here on the left-hand side, we got John Forbes leading over Vincent Sora right now, only by 18 points. So, and then you got Danny Crocker, Nick Crawford, Christopher Norris, you know, you got all these guys all the way down to 16th. Basically, they're in it, right? So, except that you get down to, you know, Krolik and all that stuff, but you also got Freed over here. Look, look at this. Gregory Smith is uh, only a couple points behind, two points behind. Um, no, eight points behind uh, the next guy. So, 
But if you look here, you got Tyler still involved into this. Noah Steele still involved into this. Anthony Gaudio is still involved into this yet, Zach. So, I mean, this, this, this right side in three races can shuffle so much. It, it really can shuffle a lot. And the right side, I think, is where the key of this lies. And, you know, we talk about Jared Talmadge on the pole. 25th in right. points. You need to be top 25 in points for a win to lock you in. So he, him pushing himself last week into 25th in points was a huge first step here for these next three races. Now, looking at the cut, I mean, he technically can still point his way in, in my opinion. He's going to yeah. have to have three amazing races. I hope they got all the drivers ahead of him have somewhat mediocre races. I think it's still possible from points, in my opinion. But the biggest thing for him in the top 25, if he can go win, he can lock himself in. His teammate Thomas Green there in 28th, that's the other one I was watching for. Mm. If he can move himself up too, he could be a threat to win possibly also. Yeah, Thomas Green, though, just hasn't having <laughs> He's just bad luck right now. He's yeah. in the wrong yeah. place at the wrong time. I mean, he's got a fast truck and everything, but unfortunately it's like, wow, really again? It, it's definitely been that way for him for sure. Is uh I think we're going to see here the schedule now coming up, Robert. Three races to go. This is going to be very much the crunch time of the rest of the season. And you got Pocono tonight. But more importantly, I think next week, you yeah. got that middle race here of these next three of Lime Rock. And then to end it all with Las Vegas, we got three epic races ahead of us to close out this regular season. Lime Rock itself is epic. But like, we always go to Las Vegas and things like that. We know, right? But Lime Rock? The last time they were at Lime Rock, that was a wild race to watch. I even went back the other day and re-watched the race that they did the first time. And, man, was that ever a wild race and fun to watch. It, you know, you don't go to these traditional tracks. You know, great, we're NASCAR. We go to traditional tracks. But every once in a while, you throw in, you know, like a Lime Rock. <laughs> man, things can change really fast with that one race, Zach. Oh, it could all change in the blink of an eye. I mean, you know, you don't talk a lot about, you, I mean, you do talk about lap traffic being a factor at road courses, but with the shortness of that track, it seems like it's the major number one factor. So yeah. we'll get to see, I think, in a very interesting race there for sure, nonetheless to say, but I'm still excited for the other two here at Pocono and Las Vegas. So three epic races to close out the regular season, Robert. That's right. So, our next little segment that we've been doing on uh, Thursday night and here started on Monday night is the Pick'ems. So, right now, tonight, we don't have Sam Dyer in the booth, so he gets a fat zero. How about that, Zach? <laughs> but, anyways, we go to we go to which he's out in chat. Thank you, Sam. Uh, Sam. Uh, hopefully, you have a great, you know, birthday party with your brother. Uh, go yep. enjoy yourself, bud. That, that's awesome. But, you know, Zach, you... Uh, you have your pick in here, and uh, explain to the viewers uh, the reason why you took this one. Well, I think uh, I had to take Vince's sword, Robert. I had to go with the 15. Favorite track. Talk to this driver. He says Pocono's the one track he loves in the service the most. Uh, I think he's going to be very interesting fast. He qualified ninth, though, so he's going to have to come through the field, but I think he'll be the one to watch out for. All right, yep. So you're going to take Vincent Sora with uh, we got time running out here. My pick is going to be, I'm going with it again, Ethan Smith. Come on, buddy. I just have a feeling, Zach, that it's right around the corner. When he starts getting it, He we've we seen him be fast. We've seen him win. And I believe once he starts uh, getting on that roll, I just think he's going to start locking a, a couple wins in. So that's going to be my pick here tonight at Pocono. I like that pick, Robert. I think Ethan will figure it out here soon. And he's always one that's good at unorthodox tracks, and that's what Pocono is. But the warm-up session has come to an end, folks. <laughs> we're, we're now going to take it to um, the grid. Yeah, before you go to the grid here, one yeah. second here, Zach. Did you look, look at you to that? Sam's cheating, and he's not even here. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm going to I'm have to spy on anyway, that real quick. Anyways, yeah. He's uh, taking Cedric oh, he Hunter. Oh, Cedric. Yeah. So, okay, that's fine. That's fine, buddy. Take Cedric. That That's good. You know, all right. We'll, well, we'll we... let him pick out yeah. the booth. We'll let him, let's, yeah. we'll let him slide. We'll let him have that still a big fat zero. <laughs> Sorry, Cedric. Nothing against you there, buddy, but fat zero, buddy. <laughs> um. Anyways, as we're getting ready to grid here, Zach, and we're going to bring up the starting lineup. 
Yeah, it's going to bring up that starting lap, and it's brought to you by Hot Lap Threads. Racing lifestyle tees, hoodies, hats, and more. Hot Lap Threads offers racing lifestyle apparel, perfect for race day, fueling your passion for racing with apparel that looks as slick as the race cars out on track. Make sure you check out Hot Lap Threads at hotlapthreads.com. Thank you to that, the qualifying grid sponsor, but let's get into that grid. And you can see pole position. It's that 10 machine of Jarrett Talmadge starting alongside him in second. It's going to be the 74 of Nick Crawford. Third position is going to be Sam's pick there of Cedric Hunter. Fourth is going to go to the 01 of Aaron Kralik. Fifth position is going to be held by Anthony Gaudio with six being the double zero of Thomas Green. Seventh is going to go to Joshua Kanata. Eighth position is going to be the 14 of GT Rosari. My pick tonight in ninth is going to be the 15 of Vincent Sora. Starting in tenth is going to be Jesse Thorna. Starting in 11th, just outside that top 10, is the 38 of Christopher Norris. Alongside him in 12th, it's going to be the 9 of Justin Campbell. 13th is going to be Robert's pick, the 99 of Ethan Smith. Alongside him in 14th, it's going to be the 25 of Cody Reed, with 15th position going to the two of Danny Cochran. Points leader John Forbes is going to start back in 16th, with 17th position being held by the 19 of Tyler Dingler. 18th is going to go to the 24 of Ali Fonseca, with 19th starting position here for Martin Morales Jr. Rounding out our top 20 is going to be Mason Cassidy in the 17. In 21st, it's going to be Justin Smith, with 22nd being occupied by Samuel Garcia. 23rd going to Brandon Maddox. 24th is going to be the 5 Dakota Maniz. And rounding out our 25 trucks here tonight at Pocono, it, for spring break, it's going to be Joshua Freed. Right. And Joshua Freed there, you know, he's right on that cut line there, Zach. So you start way in the back, see what kind of game plan he has for the night. It's definitely, I think, a thought that's got to be in his mind to get up through the field because we've talked about it. You know, the bonus point column in that second right-hand group that we just showed earlier, that bonus point column is not very big. I think that could be where the gains could be huge. And if you're someone like a Jared Thomas right here in home pole position in 25th of points, and his teammate even Thomas Green back there sixth right now, he those two can gain major amounts of points here tonight, Robert. It's all going to be about that stage there at lap 30. That is right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting ready to rock and roll here tonight with the ISRC Ruck Series here um, at Pocono. Um, if you're out there watching on YouTube, of course, um, don't forget to hit that like button, share button, share it to your friends or your favorite social media platforms so all your family and friends can see what you watch and have them come in and join. But also, we have on YouTube, there is a clip it button, or actually it's, uh, you know, the, the clip tool. Um, where you be able to clip segments out that you like to highlight and you make that clip and maybe it'll feature in one of our shorts that we put on YouTube and TikTok. So if you see something exciting out there, make sure you clip it and you share it to your friends and it will go into our database and might be able to use it. But here we go, Zach. We're going to get ready to rock and roll. Here we go. Race number nine of season number six. Three races to go in the regular season. It's spring break at the Tricky Triangle presented to you by the Serenity Scapes. And it's the green flag as they cross that start finish line to head down to turn one. Nick Crawford from the second position. Robert, huge start for him. But look at that third row. It's going to be the driver on the bottom there looking through. It looks like that's Anthony Gaudio. Anthony Gaudio is going to be looking, but you can see him. Two by two go. Oh, no, no. Does he save it? Does he save it? No, he does the not. Record. It is the huge one. Clip it, baby. It is bad. And no yellow. Cedric yeah, yellow's Hunter. out now. Holy mackerel. Yeah, yellow is coming out there. And it all kind of started around the seven of Cedric Hunter. I believe he got loose first. Gaudio, I believe, may have got a tap from the 16 of of uh, Kanata from there. And that sends him around. Vincent Sora slightly involved. So multiple drivers here. It looks like the six of Justin Smith is we're going to check back on this replay here. You can see Cedric Hunter coming through the corner. Just going to oh, step out sideways on cold tires oh. and lose it. And man, oh, wow. man, it's going to catch Gaudio out. That's going to spin the 99 of Ethan Smith out. Oh. The six there, Justin Smith takes a hit and just multiple oh. other drivers. I even believe Brendan Maddox was involved in that one there in the 28. So lots of damage given all around here early. And yeah. Huge wall of track position for some of those guys too, like Cedric Hunter. And I, you know, I don't, <laughs> don't want to harp on Cedric Hunter, but you know, one of my good buddies out, out of, out of the, the booth here, but you know, 
that, that's a common mistake he's made before on these cold tires before. Yeah, that is, uh, we seen, last time we seen the big pile up, um, you know, here at ISRC was actually at uh, uh, Mark Whitley at Bristol when he lost it going into turn one on cold tires. Um, that, that's the last time we've seen it, but man, like you said, Zach, you know, the, the trucks that got damaged there in the back, so, you know, playoff drivers and trying to just survive. Now it's just going to be 10 times more that they're going to have to survive. For one, they got to get their truck fixed, right? Correct. Um, and how much damage do they have? You know, they're going to be, you know, have the, have a little bit of pace on fresh tires. But once those fresh tires, you know, basically burn off after 15 laps, the truck starts getting that ill handling feeling. And you'll know within the next 15, 20 laps exactly if your truck's even up the horsepower or, you know, how much damage is actually done to your vehicle. That, that'll mm -hmm. be very true, Robert. This is a place, again, you definitely just don't want any type of damage on, your fr on the front, the rear end, any side panel. It just causes drag. Yeah. So you're definitely just going to lose straightaway speed. And what is Pocono? And really three giant straightaways attached by three high-speed corners. So it, uh, all about aerodynamics. That is a one major factor. I can tell you, all, Anthony Gaudio with a good bit of center punch damage on the nose. I looked at Mark Morales. He had a good little bit of left front splitter damage. Justin Smith, a good bit of right side. Maddox, good right front and right the nose uh, looks like Cedric Hunter, maybe a little bit of left front splinter damage. Not too much for the seven and not too much for Ethan Smith, who was also involved in that. It looks like most of his damage was to the rear end. So driver's not too hurt from that burst wreck. It's just going to be mostly yeah. some, uh, some, some loss of track position and maybe some loss of straightaway speed, which, yeah. again, can be such a huge factor. Yeah, and not only that, we'll bring up the weather here now, Zach, as, um, you know, we got we got a lot of talking we can do here under yellow as they pace around here on this uh, you know, big oval here, that here at Pocono. Um, but um, bringing up the weather here, looking at it now, we still, with that damage, you know, with these trucks, um, I'm looking at the first thing is humidity here. Still at 93%. We got a wind going west almost 20 miles per hour. Um, you can see the trees in the background just swaying crazily. Crack temperature 79 with the air temperature of 66. Um, but with that damage on the trucks, how much does it a factor, you know, because, you know, humidity affects the engine, affects the horsepower. So if they're down on horsepower, they could be really down on horsepower because of humidity. The, the, as, as a huge factor, Rob, the, the less horsepower that these trucks are going to have from the humidity you know which again humidity is a measure of just you know how much liquid is in the air there relative and that right there is going to suffocate these engines they want they want as much oxygen as possible to you know to congr uh, create that combustion that makes that worse power for these right. trucks and you know when you get that higher humidity it's going to take away from that that you know air out there for that truck to be able to suck up and make power so it is something uh, that's going to cause a huge factor of that power dropping, and then that makes the damage even that much worse because the more horsepower you have, the more you can kind of drive through some drag, aero drag, but the less horsepower you have, the more that drag is going to be exaggerated. So, right. yeah, definitely going to have some exaggeration to that damage here from just even these conditions and even the wind. I mean, we've had some pretty big wind yeah. gusts up, up to 20 mile an hour. So that right there is going to have a huge factor because I know these drivers very much – you would be surprised how much throttle they're actually carrying. I believe in qualifying, some may even be able to go through the tunnel, tunnel, tunnel turn wide open. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, you're talking about the wind there, Zach. Just pay attention to everybody that's watching here live, which we appreciate you tuning in here at Freaky Fast Broadcasting. Look at the trees. The trees, are, I mean, they are not stopping. <laughs> they're, it's, it's, you know, it, they're blowing all around, all over the place. So, it is very, very windy out there, but we're getting ready to go back green. We do appreciate Nick and James out there tuning in here tonight. Hopefully your drivers can rebound back and uh, have a good race here tonight. But we're going to get ready to go green here as they are heading down into uh, turn number three here, Zach. Through the short sh shoot they go, Robert, as they head down to turn number three based off of Milwaukee Mile. So we raced there not too long ago, uh, so these drivers are very familiar with how turn three is laid out. But here they go 
out of turn number three. The pace car is going to look to take the left hand turn down the pit road. And we're going to get them back green here on lap number four. Here's we're going to be coming by to start lap number five. Green flag is in the air. And Nick Crawford from that second starting position was able to take the lead early. Now able to get a great start at the start, but there's a oh, huge hit in the back. But we got a major wreck. Justin Smith goes world? around and no caution yet because that's only one truck involved. And he is destroyed on the front stretch. He hit the inside pit wall like crazy. Um... Let's see if we can uh, go back and see exactly what happened to him here, Zach. Uh, yeah, I went back here, Robert, and looks like the five. I believe we're going to see a check up here as you see the five of Dakota Moniz here going forward, going forward. Oh, it looks like he may miss the oh, ship, couldn't get in gear. That causes oh, the six to stack up. The 91 gets in the back of him. Morales, round he goes, and front end destroyed. Night over for Justin Smith, who came in here, like we said, just outside the points below Joshua Freed in that 17th spot and that is going to hurt the likes uh, of Justin Smith. Yeah, that's that's not good, you know, and unfortunately I mean, he has time, right? That he can actually go and get the truck fixed if he wants to sit in pit road, but God knows, you know, his race is over for the night, unfortunately, but whew. so yeah, now that really makes it a difference now when it comes to uh, the point standings, right? I mean, we are just talking about it now now look at that what just happened and just within six laps the points can change so it's very interesting but as we're watching here right now we got uh watching uh vincent sawyer try to work his way up through the field here and then we got christopher norris looking on side of cody reed um uh, gonna try to make a pass going down in here to turn number uh i don't even know what turn they're even in turn three turn three down here yeah turn three here's the exit christopher norris in the 11th position so stuck where he has started but just behind his teammate who's made up a few spots there like we we're saying and they're starting to see a little bit of lap time start to flicker and it seems like Vincent Sora fastest that time behind the 15 as they cross that line and head down to turn number one but drivers trying to find the speed here early and get around each other because this first 30 like se lap segment here I, you know, I was worried a little bit about fuel, but now with that caution, there's yeah. going to be no worries at all. So this makes everybody be able to, you know, fully push, not have any worries with fuel. We should see uh, quite the brawl here as everybody fights for track position because they know I think you're going to be in that top five if you want to go win this race later. I agree here as we're watching uh, Joshua, Joshua Kanata here. He's trying to, Vincent Sore is just going to blow by him. Vincent Sore is just on, on a run right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen. But everybody's still in line using the draft and going down the front stretch. And uh, now that these tires are warmed up, uh, it's looking better now, Zach, for these guys. They got the tires warmed up, and they're, they're moving, and now they know how their trucks are going to handle. That they are definitely looking to, uh, you know, gain the spots and gain the, the, the grip and stability that they need to make up in those positions. It's, it's like right now, John Ford, one of the biggest chargers through the field right now from the 16th position here as we ride on board with him. Up to ninth and fighting for a top eight position here with Jesse Thorne up as he heads down to the tunnel turn. He's a tough corner to make a side-by-side -side pass, but just clears Thorne for a second and slides up in front of him. Luckily, Thorne not going to give him the grace to allow him to go. Yeah, I gave him the grace, but yeah, he started 16th running eight right now. We're watching him going in turn number three here, about 154, 155 miles per hour, and now he's going to get back on the gas. He's going to grab a hold of that uh, draft in front of him on that truck there and do what he picks up, 180. Oh, they're going to probably get around 190, I would imagine, right? Exactly. Okay, 186. These, yeah, these trucks are actually pretty draggy, Robert, and with the lower horsepower, they, they really don't get up to a high terminal velocity. They kind of stall out there halfway down that front straightaway so to say but you can see right here ain't much stalling out as you see Kanata up there challenging Sora you also have Ali Fonseca challenging the likes of Cody Reed so we got multiple battles going on here but it looks like Kanata trying to challenge the 15 here who has already made up some quick ground on the field from ninth up to sixth but it's the driver behind these two who's really starting to make up the ground John Forbes with reckless abandonment here, going to the bottom in three and trying to continue his charge from 16th up to seventh. Oh, uh, Josh Kanata just scraped that wall there, but yeah, we're watching here as they are swinging around and everything, and we gotta give a big shout out right now to Krolik here, running in second position, started fourth, 
Looks like he's got a fast truck here tonight. Uh, can he be one of them drivers that could be the spoiler here tonight? This would be huge. Aaron Krolik actually very, very good here at Pocono in the past, that other series. And also, I think he's had sneaky speed at some points this season. So not surprised to see him up here. The thing that he's going to hope the most, he's got to keep it up here for the majority of the race. That's been the problem with the 0-1. Yeah. Has had times up front, but just not been able to keep up front where he needs to be. Right. He's got short, short, short speed, but he doesn't have long run speed. So he has short, long run speed. But we'll have to see, like you said, that that is one of the things that um, does happen to him every once in a while where he'll be running up there, like you said, Zach, and then all of a sudden either he burned off the tires or he gets caught up into something. But 90% of the time he's burning off the tires too soon. So we'll have to wait and see if he can, uh, you know, keep it up here as we're watching a pole sitter here right now of uh, the number 10 here. Started first, back to third, and... Uh, Again, he's looking good, too, here, and he's also got his teammate right behind him of Thomas Green here is going to try to help push him up through the field. So if these two guys here have a great run, you know they're not going to disconnect, right? I mean, they're teammates. They're probably going to stay connected through the whole night. You would love to see that for them for sure as they both need some big points here to move themselves forward as Everybody flirting with us after they're off a four or off a start off a three. There is no turn four here at Pocono. Yeah, exactly. So can't, can't be messing that one up there, Robert, the tricky triangle. But I tell you what, these two are doing a great job out there. Oh, looks like Cody Reed bouncing back and forth between. Looks like Ali Fonseca and also Christopher Norris. It looks like Danny Cochran starting to come through the picture of the two machine. 15th position for Cochran starting. Kind of expecting to see the two farther up, but seems to be making his charge back up through here. Yeah, he didn't have such a good qualifying lap, so yeah, he started in the back here, and now he's working his way up. He's going to look underneath uh, Cody here and try to get him going through the tunnel tunnel turn here, but doesn't look like he's got the... Uh, didn't get it done yet, but it looks like he's got the speed to do it, maybe coming in here to three and four, Zach. Yeah, he does. It's crazy to say, Reed, though, challenging once Ali Fonseca for a position for 10th now looking to maybe fall out back to 13th but it was the 25 who holds on to the, that position as the two just couldn't get the drive off of turn number three there but behind them Anthony Gaudio Tyler Dingler battling it looks like Tyler Dingler going to make the position here up to 14th for him but even behind them it looks like Ethan Smith making the three wide pass on the bottom with Cassidy and Samuel Garcia and Toes they also have center cutter here so a bunch of the drivers involved in that first incident right here together yeah, and I noticed, too, the 39, right? I mean, we were just talking about him again at the beginning when that wreck came out. He got his truck fixed up, you know, right now, and he's still in the lead lap. He just got to make it to that, you know, stage break here and be able to fix his truck up a little bit more. As we're watching Issa Smith and uh, Cedric Hunter here go battling at each other, and then you got the nine of, uh, who is the nine? Sorry, I, I don't remember names. That is Justin Campbell. Uh, in the nine, trying to latch on to Cedric Hunter there, Zach. That it is Justin Campbell back here, along with Cedric Hunter. There's definitely some drivers having to figure be farther up in the grid, but definitely an interesting start for them. As they'll say now, Danny Cocker finally going to make that pass and clear the 25 here for a moment as he slides up. Will the 25 give him the room? Remember, these two had a little bit of a, uh, you know, a, a spat there, uh, you know, a couple races back, and right now. The two able to make the pass and move up to that 12th position to 25. Well, I got to give the 25 some credit, though. I mean, he had multiple chances to be able to, you know, hey, back, did he back up, you know, on the two? Because he felt like he was uh, a little robbed, I guess, or you know what I mean? But Cody Rigg ha has not. He's, he's, he's staying clean and racing and. I think maybe it's not out of his mind, but he forgot He forgot about it. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's there, but it's not. You know what I mean there, Zach? Exactly. Yeah. He, he's yeah. probably not going to act on that thought anymore, but it's definitely still in the back of your mind. You never forget as a driver those incidents that you have with each other. But the one thing that I'm starting to see a little bit interesting scenarios here, Robert, is we're starting to see breakaways of packs. And I think the top five might be starting to separate themselves. John Forbes has got up to six. I think he might be able to claw onto them. 
and even maybe GT or Azari, but it seems like maybe the 16 Kanata is starting to fall back here a little bit. But it looks like the 15 of Incisora, a continued Jeez. charge forward. This 15 strong, but look up front. The 0-1 of Aaron Whoa. Krolik, he's taking a chance on Nick Crawford, and they almost beat and bang off a of turn number three here down the front stretch. What racing we got going on in stage one here on lap number 15. Yeah, go Aaron. Um, yeah, he's up here now. Now now we got we got Jared trying to get into, involved into this to 10. We're going to have a four to five to six to seven battle for the lead here very shortly, Zach, if they keep up doing what they're doing right now. That we are. It is stacking everybody up. I talked about packs breaking away. Well, here comes the stack up once again. It's now Krolik. He's going to have some help actually now as the 10. Tom is going to give him a little bit of a shove down into two. And Aaron Krolik give him the front spot. He's two of the lead. Does Crawford do a crossover maneuver? Oh. Krolik says, no, sir. Going to throw the block, but it's going to be Nicholas Crawford here falling back to second as now Krolik going to take the lead. It takes the lead. We got a new leader here coming out of three. And we still got the 10 looking underneath. And it looks like it's very hard to pass underneath there, Zach. It is very difficult to get that passing done. Is now Vincent Sora. He saw the likes Aaron Krog take position. Now he's putting the side draft on the 10 of Talmadge. Look at his maneuver Whoa. all the way from fourth. Now trying to take over second. Can he get the run off of one? It's going to be the key. Because now Talmadge, what does he do? Does he fall in line or does he slot in behind the 15? It looks like he will. So Vincent Sora clean pass for him he's took two in the last two laps can he get another two to get to the lead i was just ready to say there's a very possibility that he can because right now his lap times he's got his last lap he ran a 53.834 to the leaders 54 flat so he was two tenths faster that last lap zach that he was and look at him already looking to the inside here of nicholas crawford off of the exit of turn three just can't get the drive up to the quarter panel. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for that side draft to pull that driver beside, you know, alongside you back to you, and you're able to try to drive it into the corner and clear him. But Crawford latching onto the draft and then went ahead. Now the 15 looks to the inside on the 7 4 to close the door. But he's going to come to the back bumper of the 01 and quickly have to lift. That might open up the door for Vincent Sawyer here off at one. Hey, he's got a latch going to Nicholas Las Vegas here as he's right behind Nick Crawford here. He's going to go down to the turn three. We're right along inside the cockpit, ladies and gentlemen. Roger, he gets off the gas really, really early, and he feathers that thing through, and you can see Nick get a better run going through the tunnel turn there. So that lap, this lap, you know, they just did here. It looks like Nick are banned. Okay, anyways, Nick, he looks pretty good in the tunnel turn, but... Vincent Soares is full sending it in three, Zach. That he is. He is. <laughs> that he's gaining lots of time personally on the entry of one and the entry of three. Seems like he saves a little bit in two to just to try to make sure to maybe manage those tires a little bit. But right here is where he really gains time. He gets very shallow entries and just tries to get to the inside of people. But that time Crawford closing the door is now. Sora going to have the likes of the 10 of Talmadge with a little bit of a run here down the back stretch here as it's going to be that 15 having to be on the defense here heading towards the tunnel turn. A little bit of defense. Uh, I don't think he's got to play too much. He has to play too much defense. Um, I think a lot of these drivers right now, Zach, are just happy where they're sitting at. You got GT uh, right now running in eighth position. You got Ollie back here battling with uh, Christopher Norris. You know, for ninth and tenth, so it looks like everybody just settled down. And they are settling down just a little bit here, but we'll see how Fonseca can hold back this 38. Is Christopher Norris, like you said, here behind him? They're about three seconds back from those leaders, and actually, it would have been a little bit of time when everybody battles, but they can't. They, it's hard not to battle also yourself, so that's the. I think the case that they're playing themselves into right now is Fonseca continues his charge forward from the 18th position. He's one of the biggest movers. The other biggest mover is John Forge up to the 6th position from 16th. And now some battling going on up there. It looks like now it's the likes of Jarrett Talmadge trying to make the pass on the 74 of Crawford who has gotten passed by Vincent Sora. So unsure where Sora got the move done. Maybe he got it done in the tunnel turn and can confirm yeah looks like he got to the outside of him coming off a of one and got to the outside of the 74 and now crawford kind of getting trained here on the inside yeah i think his uh, tires are about ready to let go right i mean 
So you can see that he's starting to struggle with tire wear. Um, so I believe his uh, pit crew and spotters probably tell him, all right, uh, you know, just calm down, do your thing, and uh, just ride this out for the next nine laps here until we get to the stage break. See how he can manage that from that fourth position, but Tom and our pole setters got his way back up to third, and look at this. Teammate of Nick Crawford up to the top five, 16th to fifth for this 11 machine of John Forbes, who has done an excellent job. Now going to have a run here out of the tunnel turn. He's going to look to the inside of Nick Crawford here and try to get the positioning heading down the three. Maybe this these two not going to fight too hard, but Crawford also knows he can't just roll over for his teammate. They have Thomas Green right behind them too. No, because now you can see Thomas Green. He's going to jump down with 11 and try to push him gave him a run here it comes he's going to get right up underneath him he's going to push him going down into turn one and now he's going to duck right back up here with uh on the high side and uh that that's good drafting there basically he he's keeping them cars side by side and look at the run he's getting and now he's got to make a decision and now he's going to go down. nope never mind go three wide three wide down the long stretch here head towards the tunnel turn thomas green on the inside john forbes in the middle nick crawford up top three wide who's going to back out who's going to put put push to come to shove Nobody. as they exit out of two they make it three wide now heading down to three yeah they said going through the tunnel turn three wide let's go down to turn three three wide as they take it through three wide and this is interesting you got nick crawford giving a lot of room on the top and you got 11 looking on the inside and now they finally get single file but wow that was half a lap of side by side three wide nice that but now look amazing. at this Kanata's back into the sack that is it brought Kanata right into it it even kind of brought uh, almost Ali Fonseca and along with GT and Zari right with it too is in the background while that was going on Christopher Norris he got into the wall off of turn number three that's allowed David Cochran to get to his inside and now these guys will battle but we have a giant stack up of cars from fourth on back fourth on back but i also want to bring up uh, talk about the weather don't rub your eyes ladies and gentlemen that is the humidity out there on the track so it's hard pretty hard to see the cars or trucks um thank god we can see the paint schemes a little bit with the numbers but other than that they hit the humidity zach they disappear the, car, the trucks are like okay they're there but where did they go we're nearing that almost 100% mark of humidity. I mean, it's 97% now. Up, it's climbed oh from the start good. of this race. And look at that 20 mile an hour wind also to go along with that. It just seems like the storm almost keeps rolling in. But, you know, from the forecast, it does look like the clouds are going to clear out at some point. But, man, oh, man, it doesn't seem like this humidity going anywhere with some kind of haze it's created on this track. Whoa! It's all the wrecking up front here. It's Thomas Green, Nick Crawford into it off of turn number one here. And that is not going to bring it into the stage either. That was on lap 24 of of 80 here. We need to be five within 30 to get the call, the stage break inning. That's going to make strategy galore here. Uh, who was that with Nick Crawford and who else? Thomas Green. Hey. Double zero there, and they, they were battling for that fifth position, and it just seems like maybe a side draft and a little bit of code going on. Well, well, we'll watch here on the replay, see exactly what happens. As again, you can see the fog, and you can see, oh yeah, yeah, that was definitely net code. That it was, and you know Crawford taking a risk, you know pulling the side draft up to the quarter panel of Thomas Green, but that's just super unfortunate. That contact is made before actual contact is there and that's like what like what we said call you call and i racing net code and it's when the two bodies of the cars don't meet physically and visibly but they meet network wise and yep. you'll see your crawford pull high pull high get up to the quarter panel and Wait. it's just gonna be a little bit of net code that spins the double zero side yeah that not bad he he hit the inside wall a little bit but you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's he just lost track position, but you can see at this camera angle, you can't see the car. But <laughs> it, it's it's down there, ladies and gentlemen. Holy mackerel! I mean, we we broadcasted a lot of races in our, our years here now, um, Zach. I never recall seeing this much fault. Well, I'll give you one, Robert. I will give you one. That Motegi. One. WSSR oh. in the rain. Or not in the rain, in the rain. <laughs> but, well, Same one way. day maybe we'll get the rain. <laughs> but 
the fog, we had a, a foggy race at Motegi, and yeah, had similar similar looks to this, in my opinion. Yeah, almost this just haze that sits over the track, and it's an awkward feeling even for the drivers. I was gonna and say, I think right now there's some awkward feelings going on right now because pit road decisions going on. It looks like they're coming down. Okay, well, it looks like everybody's coming down pit road here, ladies and gentlemen. But as they're making their pit stops here, the everybody's rolling in, except for a couple drivers. Looks like they're gonna try to stay out here for the stage, I do believe, and see if they can get into you know get some stage points out of this. But um, you're a driver, you raced in the fog and or in humidity like this. We got this new dynamic weather system uh, that I racing just put out about a month and a half ago which starts causing this kind of weather um this is based on something and it this is uh what it what it shows and what it's doing as a driver zach how difficult is it uh, to race seeing is it still clear in the cockpit or is there a little like a haze messing with your brain and eyes when you're racing you know it, you would think with the views you get here with some of these cameras it would be kind of hazy in the cockpit I will say when we were at Motegi, it was actually pretty hazy, but more or less, it almost just gives you the feel of almost like it just looks like it's about to rain. That, yeah. That's the one thing. If you've ever been driving in your car and it's just a very, you know, it feels like the cloud ceiling, the ceilings of the cloud is just dropped. dropped. <laughs> you know, it's almost like you're driving in the clouds a little bit. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it, it doesn't make visibility too bad um, for the driver's sake, but it definitely can affect, you know, more or less the spotters. If this was, you know, not a virtual race where we did have virtual spotters. And, you know, these guys are standing up in the stands. That's where, again, they probably have to consider this race being red flagged at some points for visibility for those guys. You know, yeah. I don't really think it would come down to the drivers a lot of times. I think it would be more or less that. So yeah. it is, it's an interesting factor that's playing in. And, you know, it's it's definitely something I think has played a, a mind on these drivers here. But the one thing that's played a little bit on my mind here is yeah. this pitch strategy, Robert. We've had five trucks stay out with the Sora. The first one to come out of pit road it looks like it was four tires and fuel for everybody that came down there and i think they're going to most likely stay out at our lap 30 stage break while these other drivers look to uh go to the end of it and here we got the pace car lights off here on lap 27 so we're gonna have you know three laps here for these guys and i tell you the fall off was pretty dramatic there you know, we're looking at upwards of about a second and a half for some of these drivers falling off. So we'll see if the cool down of the tires brings back some of that lap time for these guys, Robert. But I think this top five could be in a very interesting situation when we get closer to this more cast stage break. Yeah, I, yeah, I have to agree with you there. The fall off and I mean, everything you just said there, it's going to be interesting on what these top five can do. You know, they only got a couple laps and, uh, you know, it's all about at least trying to stay in the top 10, right? The reason they did this gutsy call is to get some stage points. Um, difference in laps, tire, you know, laps then once we do go under, you know, caution for the stage, what, it's going to be three, four laps difference on tires? Um, does that make a big, huge difference? It, it can. Yeah, can. But, you know, I just think track position is why these other drivers have took that choice here to pit yeah. before the stage is yeah. knowing if I stay out here and risk trying to hold on to anything, it's just not going to play out well for him. But you can see here, Justin Campbell, the second place driver, is just warming the tires up. Yeah, but again, these top five did it for stage points, right? They're running in the back. They know they can't get up to the front. These are some of the drivers that were involved in that first big massive yellow that we had. Um, so, you know, their, their strategy changed by lap number four. So, here we go. We'll see how this all plays out as we're getting ready to go back green. Here we go. Green flag is out here for spring break at the Tricky Triangle brought to you by Serenity Scapes. But it looks like everything is going oh wild boy. here as it is going side by side, almost four wide farther back there as Vincent Soares, the first to duck out from the third row. And he will three wide go to the bottom trying to take over second. And look at the middle. I know we want to talk about what's Crawford going around. To, oh, no, no, no. And that's going to bring it into the Morecast stage break here. And your stage winner going to be Justin Campbell. So the wow. drivers who gambled 
it paid off Robert. Ten bonus points to the nine. Joshua Freed, who also came here on the points cut line, in second. So huge yeah. break. But it's Nick Crawford going around. Yeah, they did the they did the gamble and uh, yeah. Well, we'll watch the replay here. We're riding along with Nick Crawford here. We'll see what goes on. He's going down to turn number one here. You can see he's behind the 28 of Brandon. And, oh, he, oh, did GT get him? I believe, actually, GT did not make contact before the 74 steps out sideways. I think the 74 with the 28 of Brandon Maddox and throwing the old tires just kind of you know, hitting that bump off throttle and maybe just over rotating this car because I think we're going to see it step outside yeah, right there. there yeah, GT's yeah. not even even to the bumper yet. So, yeah. yeah, similar case to what Cedric Hunter, we remember we saw Cedric Hunter spin there very low off the exit of turn one. And so that same thing plays out there. But man, oh man, Robert, Justin Campbell winning that Morecast stage, which technically hasn't won it yet. We're on lap 29 here, but that yellow, when that yellow came out, it should have ended the stage. So, Congrats to Justin Campbell before he comes to pit row. We got to give a shout out to Morecast. There is, they're your sponsor for the stage break here at ISRC. So make sure you head on over to at Morecast on Instagram for a variety of NASCAR content, including diecast memes and iRacing. Check out also Morecast on YouTube for their diecast reviews, their NASCAR discussions, and much more. So shout out to Morecast, your stage sponsor here at the ISRC Larry Arts Productions Truck Series. As stage one has come to a close, Justin Campbell here, Robert, going to yeah. be looking to come to pit road now, and he has got to be smiling. And we'll take a we'll, we'll talk to him after he gets to the pit road and see, you know, what he thinks about getting those ten bonus points. Yeah, I mean, I'm just about to stage up here right now. Look at all these drivers. Cedric Hunter comes home fifth, gets five points. Ethan Smith fourth points. You know, so these drivers here, what a call, what a call that they had, and. uh I had a funny feeling that that was that was their game plan, right? And that and, and you know what? The racing gods are with them tonight, right? They just they he, he got the max point in the stage, so that that helps him out big time. And it really does. Great job by Justin Campbell. As the nine is going to pull it in here on Looking the hill to get service. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can see that giant hill there on <laughs> pit road. Looks a little bit of a roller coaster ride of a pit road from this angle, but. He's going to get four tires and fuel. We'll see where he comes out here and where he'll fly when it comes to positioning on the racetrack. Looks like as he exits out of pit road, looks like he'll be in the 18th position. So from the stage break wing to the 18th position, let's have a chit chat with the nine of Justin Campbell here. If we can have that for a moment, see if he's in here. Yes, he is. So let's get him up here in the waiting room and have a chat with our stage, our Morecast stage break winner. Hey, Justin and Zach up in the booth, man. Congrats on the stage win. You got a copy. Yeah, I got you. Well, man, played the strategy, stayed out, got the quick yellow that immediately ended the stage. How does that feel to get 10 bonus points handed to you, though? Well, it feels good, man. Might as well should have took the gamble since uh, I got a UO penalty for this race and a uh, three weeks probation for hitting stuff, basically. So I'm trying to do better for myself to not ruin anybody else's races and trying to race a little bit cleaner. But so far it's going so well. Uh, now the problem is now going back green, going to be all the way in the back. Got to find a way to the front. Yeah, well, that, and that's, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just going to say there, uh, Justin, that, that, that was what I was thinking in my head. So what is the game plan? Because you were all the way in the front, now you're all the way in the back, and you got to work your way through the field again. Uh, what is your strategy going forward from here? Honestly, just going to wait on people to make mistakes. That's what I've done before, uh, caution before the stage ended. Just wait on people to make a mistake and pass them on the outside. It's just hard to make passes here. Is Justin Manuel, congrats on the stage win. Hopefully, we can see you back up here maybe later in the race for a talk in the winner's circle, man. So, congrats on the stage break win, and uh, we'll hopefully talk to you later. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, folks, that right there was Justin Campbell. We'll get him sent back to his team and get these guys re racked up, ready to go for the start of the end of this race because we've got our stage breakout no more breaks it's all down to lap 80 for that checkered flag and with it playing out like this right we got 50 laps to go here we'll be coming by it will be 49 when we cross that line to take the green flag here 
I'm telling you what, this is a this is going to be quite an ending because these drivers don't got to go about 25 laps on a tank of fuel. No worries with that. But like you said earlier, if we get that timing of the yellow mm -hmm. around 33, 32 to go, we could see some interesting strategies be employed, but we're going to need that yellow flag. Yep, yep. So never say never, ladies and gentlemen, as Zach said. We're getting ready to go back green here again here with uh, ISRC Truck Series here at Pocono Raceway. Um, I hear at Freaky Fast Broadcasting, and uh, we'll soon hit them uh, sponsors there. But, you know, uh, uh, I forget what the name of the, what, what's her what's her website again. I do apologize. Uh, Serenity Escapes, as I believe it's on Etsy. I, I got to get a question on Norris on that. And we'll, we'll, we'll ask you about that as it's his, uh, his mother. But, yeah, thank you to, the, to her for sponsoring a nice race. And we're going to get to see these beautiful paint schemes these drivers have brought here. Do battle here. At Pocono, as the pace car pulls off, and Vince is sort of going to lead us back to green alongside with Aaron Krolik. And Vince is sort of a green flag in the air, takes off. And Robert, I got to tell you, Aaron Krolik did a great job in that first stage, but now he's going to have to deal with yeah. someone new to get by. It's the 15 of Vince and Sora. Yeah, and these two know each other very well, and they've raced each other in multiple years in different leagues. But right now, Aaron Krolik is just getting steamrolled over right now, Zach. He is Aaron Krolik losing spots left and right. And look who's making big moves. It's Ali Fonseca in that orange machine down low, bright. And he's making a big move. Is this Kanata making contact with Forbes, who's almost going to just sit around? Forbes saves it, though, as we keep it green off of Dex wow. in turn two. And everybody scatters. Wow. Everybody scattered. And like you said, Forbes almost lost it. And good job from him keeping it all uh, green. Now we got side by side. We got. Joshua cannot. Oh, into the wall. Oh, there goes GT. Oh, into Ooh. the barrels. Big hit for GT there and others around too oh. on the front straightaway as the caution is out. Looks like Gaudio may be involved with that as he was sent around. But Clip GT Unizari is going to be the one, Robert, right here. that Clip gets it, the baby. most damage. Oh, yeah, boom. Oh. Explosion of the wall wow. barrels there. And that's that's going to be a meatball required damage for the 14. He's going to bring it straight to pit road with a toe. Night over for the 14 GT is already. We're going to see exactly what, what happened, happened here. here. Oh, oh looks like Kanata come off the wall there. Oh. Maybe got into it. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see if we can uh, ride on board here with uh, with uh, with a GT here. You can see. Gonna see you right there. They get each other oh, off the wall, and there is nothing he can do. Innocent bystander as he was along for the ride. Oh, man. And damage has been dealt to GT Arzari. And the caution, the quick caution has come out here. And while we're under caution here, let's give a shout out to some of our sponsors here at ISRC. And let's start off with their title sponsor of Larry Arts Productions. Make sure you head on to YouTube and check out Larry Art Productions where you can get your comedy variety YouTubes for some great entertainment from Larry, from Larry Arts Productions himself. So make sure you check them out on YouTube and Instagram. Trust us, you're going to be thoroughly enjoyed with what they got going on over there. Is thank you again them to being the title sponsor here at the ISRC Truck Series. And other, uh, other sponsors are going to be Hot Lap Threads. Like we said earlier, racing lifestyle tees, hoodies, hats, and more. Hot Lap Threads. Offers racing lifestyle apparel perfect for race day, fueling your passion for racing with apparel that looks as slick as the cars out on track. Make sure you head on over to hotlapthreads.com to check out some hot lap threads. Next, we have Morecast, who was our stage break sponsor, but they do a lot here for ISRC. You can head on over to Instagram at Morecast to check out for a variety of NASCAR content, including diecast memes and racing or iRacing. Also, you can go check them out on, on Morecast on YouTube for diecast reviews, die, NASCAR discussions, and much, much more. So, again, shout out to all the sponsors here at ISRC. Thank you again to Serenity Scape Sense, as they're again your local hometown business specializing in crafting handmade, unique, and whimsical car freshies and wax melts. And you can use code ISRC15 for 15% off a Serenity Escape Sense. So, again, thank you to the sponsors for everybody 
as it's been a wild, wild night here so far for ISRC as Pocono with the fog and the high humidity has brought out some interesting incidents. Very interesting. Yeah, I have to agree here, but, you know, these guys are still chugging away at this big uh, two-mile track here at Pocono. Tricky triangle, which it can be tricky sometimes, um, but, you know, yellows sometimes breed yellows, so we'll see if these guys can get, uh, you know, everything straightened up and uh, get back in line and do some hard-nosed racing side-by-side -side right now, but, you know, just looking at the ticker board here, Still looking pretty good. Um, you know, Nick Crawford had that spin there, Zach, but he's set back in 15th position. Mason Cassidy's been having a good run. Haven't talked much about him. And Samuel in the 50. We have not talked about him all night. And right now, he's up there running here in 11th position. Jesse Thornock, he's having a great run in 10th position. Tyler Dingler is in the top 10, Zach. We don't talk about him much, and he's in the top 10 having a great run here tonight. Daddy really is. There's a lot of guys having some great runs, and Pocono's a place to do it, man. This is a tricky place, awkward track, not a lot that you can take from here to other places. So sometimes those drivers that don't have the results at the normal cookie cutter, you know, basic tracks that we go to, they're going to really excel here sometimes when they just come to a track that just a little bit maybe more in their wheelhouse and also a track that in my opinion comes down to a little bit of survival playing the smarts playing how to stay out of trouble because we know pocono on these restarts as we continue to get farther the more they're going to use that front straightaway to spread out and fan out yeah very true very true yeah and i mean you've seen it on the last restart they go four five six wide sometimes zach and it the track's doable. You can go six wide. Heck, you could go eight wide if you wanted to. It makes it a little tight going into turn one. You better figure it out before you hit there. But it, you can do it. It has got the room. Yeah. There is room there for activities. That is for sure, folks. And these drivers are going to make some activity for sure when we get ready to take this green flag to go back to action here. Or spring break at the Turkey Triangle pre pre presented to you by Serenity Scapes since as they come out of three that pace car is going to take the hard left hand turn back to pit road and we're going to see if we can get them green here as the green flag is out Vince Sore is going to have a good restart here but Jared Talmadge better restart from the outside than we've seen from most he's going to have the push from Ali Fonseca as they head down the first straightaway but there's drivers farther back with huge blocks back in the field it's like Nick Crawford was the one block and we just said they can go four five six wide well we didn't talk about the blocking and you can block <laughs> when you see somebody go out you say no 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 but we got a lolly guy the trucks here right behind here Zach with Mason Cassidy trying to figure out exactly where he wants to go with Cedric Hunter Man, oh man, we have a log jam for sure here heading down the two. We are almost four wide off of, off of one there this last time by. But let's see what they can do through two. As it looks like Cassidy with Maddox there stuck up behind him along with Samuel Garcia on the bottom. Thomas Green in the double zero. 74 Nick Crawford. Both those drivers trying to make a return back through. Remember, it was contact from Crawford to Green that sent him around as Crawford got spun later. But as we look at that weather, this uh -oh. battle is getting crazy as they're wrecking up farther up front. Oh. It looks like Aaron Kralik's oh. around. Oh, clip it. Here's the snippet tool. Clip it. Oh, my God, Zach. I don't know even who started it. Oh, man. What a wild scene here on the front straightaway. Yeah, and it was over. contact from Christopher Norris uh -oh. to the likes of the 01 Aaron Krolik. Oh, and man. No. Oh, man. Head first into the outside wall. This is going to be a tough one here, folks. As you're going to see on this replay this is the replay of the restart it was the next lap around that we saw the incident play out but man robert tough break for aaron crawl could we see who was restarted there on the bottom th third just kind of got stuck on that bottom and the 38 of christopher norris was we'll see here later it's going to get contact to that right rear and yeah the people who got involved in it were the likes of the three of gaudio the 17 of cassidy the double zero of thomas green i believe cedric hunter May have caught a piece of it also. Uh, the 25 could read. Just so many drivers involved with it here. But we'll see as they come through the tunnel turn. It's going to be out of three, Robert, where 
the 38 has his issues getting up into the outside wall that causes him to get into the 01. Yeah, you can see the 24 and the 01, they're side drafting, not hard, but they're side drafting. And now you got Cedric, got Cedric, uh, Christopher Norris there. He pushes uh, Ollie up, and now this is where the mess starts. We're going to see exactly what happens. He's running on the outside. Oh, he scrapes the wall. Oh, and then he's down in the crawlick, and then forget it. He is going for a ride. Look at that. Oh, does he save? Does he save it? Almost oh, saves it into the wall, but like you said, everybody else behind him, unfortunately, got involved into it because they couldn't check up in time. Very, very tough break right there. As uh, man, uh, you know, Christopher Norris there just got to the outside wall, and it, it, he went down the racetrack, got Aaron Crawlick who. Got a feel for the old one who's having such a fantastic race involved in that yeah. incident. And again, yeah, just just wrong place at the wrong time there for the old one. And this incident has oh, the uh, sun's really coming out. Yeah, it, it, actually, I was about to say our viewing experience might be getting a little better here because I think some of these clouds are parting away from the track and the humidity seems to be clearing. Is this down to 95 percent humidity? Yeah, got the sun burning up the humidity here, but. <laughs> As we are under caution, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be our time for us to take a little bit of break. You're going to have side-by-side -side action here at the ISRC Truck Series here at Freaky Fast Broadcasting, taking on Pocono Raceway. We will be right after this quick word from our sponsors.
and we are back here, everybody, at Pocono for the uh, for the spring break at the Tricky Triangle for Serenity Skate Sense. As of right now, we got a battle for the lead almost. Ali Fonseca taking a look for Vincent Sora, but man, oh man, Sora's ever covered off this rivalry. It's getting wild up front as we had an incident farther back that Brendan Maddox in the 28 had to pull the pit road. Oh man, Brendan Maddox two weeks in a row not having the luck that he wants, but John Forbes just puts down the fastest lap in the 53.565. That is flying right now, and uh, I was just ready to say real quick, where did Ali Fonseca come from? i tell you where he came from, his 18th position, biggest mover of this race is we've had some drivers with some giant movement as big oh. blocks from Vince Sora left to mm. right on the straightaway and he's able to cover off that 24's run and the way he blocked like that it made the 24 have to slow down a little bit and that killed the momentum it's all about momentum in these trucks but Vince Sora seemed to time that so perfect yeah I mean watching here we're riding on the back and you can see Ollie try to get that run here and hopefully get pushed by somebody as the sun is finally coming out on the front stretch and we can actually see the track ladies and gentlemen so as the fog is uh, starting to lift away here hopefully it'll stay away for the next least 40 laps here but you can see the draft coming up and the draft is such a key vital thing here but this is where always was getting them here coming out of one and two here well actually turn one um, was getting a good run, and now we'll see if he gets him. He's going to fall. And here he goes, Zach. And look down the inside, outside. Here he goes. Oh, we got to have Vincent try to block him, but he didn't be able to that time. That he did. The double moves by Vincent Sora. You know, we've seen him do that to the likes of John Forbes. We'll see how oh long that gosh. works, because I think some drivers may not take likings to that, and you may get a little bit of unliking oh, there, there. I think that 24 didn't like it. Look, he moves the 15 up out the boy. Yep, we're, I was just ready to say, we got to play some Bristol bump and run because uh, Vincent Sora was not giving him any room at all for two laps. And now you've got the 10 pushing Vincent Sora. You got Ollie Fonseca in the side. Oh, oh my man, I'm telling you what, I see something bad happening if these guys don't calm down, Zach. That I do too. And the 24 sliding up the racetrack in front of the 10. He's able to hold on and clear that 10 to hold on the second. But, poof, Robert, deep breaths from everybody up front. Danny Cochran trying to make the pass now around John Forbes up to fourth. Oh, but boy. Big moves here. Now Fonseca has found the inside here down into the tunnel turn. But I don't know if he'll still be able to make this pass side by side Ooh. here as they head to three. Great run for the 15 out of two. But it's going to be a dead even heat almost with the side draft here in the three. There is side draft in the turn three. And all that's doing is as these guys battle coming out of three side by side. We'll see who's going to take this lap here. It looks like Vince Sore is going to get the run on the high side. And he does, and he leads that lap there. But Ollie's going to stay on the inside to get you take it down into turn one. And Zach, all that stone is taking the trucks for, that are behind them. And that's, all that stone is just keeping them in the pack, too. As you can see, John Forbes trying to work. we got Danny Cochran now on the high side. John Forbes trying to work the outside. Man, these guys are all over. we got Christopher Norris now looking on the outside. Man. Oh, and big movements being made. And look at this. Samuel Garcia up to sixth. Jesse Thornick up to seventh. Great runs for the 50 and the 20. Uh, this is exactly what it. they need. Even Tyler Dingler is up to ninth. And now it has been an epic day for those drivers so far. They want to continue that trend as Cochran still trying to make the pass on Forbes. It's been side by side with these drivers for pretty much the st since the start of this you know, the drop of the green flag from this last restart. And now you see up front, even Ali Fonseca oh, putting the man. big block on Vincent Sora. Here's Jared Thomas. The chasing of the draft is being ensued. I, I, we still got, what, 30 laps to go? And these guys are racing. It's like the last five. And it is. That's it. That's the intensity that the ISRC Truck Series brings. They know every lap. It is valuable to be out front. That clean air so critical and so useful in these trucks, especially when it comes to a place like Pocono. The farther it gets to the run, the tougher it's going to be to follow another truck. Yeah, as we're going to see Samuel now, he's going to try to look at it underneath Danny Cochran. Nope, he's going to fall back in line. John Forbes finally got around the number two there, the hot lap design of Danny Cochran, but Danny Cochran's going to stay on the low line. He's going to block off that 50. He's going to try to get the sniff of the draft of the 11. As everybody goes down the front stretch, weaving left, right, left, right, like a snake. 
And they are. And what they're doing right there, folks, you wonder why they're going left. Why is Ali Fonseca going to that far left there? That is to break that draft. Down these straightaways, these trucks punch amazing holes in the air. And when you're behind that truck, you know, following another truck, you're in that hole. It makes the drag on your truck much less. You're able to gain top speed here as Ali Fonseca continue to break that draft as he pulls left down that straightaway and back up before the corner to try to open up and have the best angle. But here comes a run from the 15 of Sora, backed up two, and he's there oh. on the bumper heading to three. That would be more than bumper. They are hitting. Now, does uh, does Vincent Sora give back what Ollie gave him here? You know, going through the turn number three here, it does not look like it, but he's going to get another massive run coming out of turn three, going down the front stretch here. And he is. He's going to draft up through the quarter panel, side draft from the 15. Where does he break off, though? Does he pull left here, or does he stay high? As it looks like he tries to stay up to the door of the 24. Is the 24 now going to go up the racetrack a little bit? I think this could open the door for the 15 to close the door, and he does Ooh. with the 24. Now going to have to run oh. off the exit, but the 15 closes that door. Now the 24 back to the outside, down the back straightaway, and John Forbes, who made the pass on Cochran, he's up to the back bumper. Talmadge, we have four trucks up front. Four trucks, and I think the 10 and 11, if I were them, I would back off and let these two battle because right now they are not playing nice with each other at all. Not even close. They're beating and banging and passing and, and almost clipping the front nose off of each, each other as each, each driver gets a run. So, man, if you were back there in third and fourth position, Zach, what would you do? Would you, like, still try to pounce? Or would you, like, okay, maybe this, you know, like, the moves like that. Would you back off? You know, I, you know, personally, Robert, I would back off, but there's a reason why I'm not winning races like these guys are either is because you got to be willing to risk it. You got to be aggressive and keep the track position. And they know we're not far away from a pit stop here. Yeah. We're coming up on lap 50 here. We, we're getting inside that pit window of being able to make it on fuel. You technically could pit right now and make it to the end, but I think you're going to want to see these guys stretch it a little bit farther. I don't. I don't think you're going to see many come down at 50. I think you're going to start to see it really start to get busy. 55 and onwards, probably 60 is where most of the drivers are going to lean. But I think 55 and onwards will be that number. So that's why I think you see this fighting is so hard. They know if I just give up spots here, I'm just giving up time towards my pit stop. That's coming up in a mere 10 laps almost. Right, right. And like you said, lap 55 to lap 60, you're looking at a 25 to 20 lap stent run on these top on the set of tires and right now they are on a stent run of 24 laps right now so they know how the tires are going to react within 25 to 24 laps uh, you know, 25 to 20 laps you know per uh you know stent yeah that that's exactly right and <laughs> and as uh the 24 here not able to get back around the 15 15 has been able to clear now Talmadge Gotta be setting the sights on the 24. Can he get back up to that pack? But look at this driver, too. Up to eighth. It's the 19th of Tyler Dangler, who started back in 17. He's got Jesse Thornick ahead. Samuel Garcia right ahead of that. So Tyler Dingler here, possibly flirting with a top six finish here coming up to the end of this race. He is putting himself in an excellent position. This 19 having one of his best races of the season. Yeah, and he, he's been one of them drivers that are to call him a comer or goer but sometimes he, he comes and he shows up like tonight and then there's other tracks it's like what what happened to tyler you know you, you know what i mean so he's the type of driver that is uh i still he's there's certain tracks that are good for him and certain tracks that are just not and that's just the nature of racing um you can't be good at every track uh, because if you are you'd be like a jimmy johnson then you know what i mean but you know, he's having a great run here tonight, like you said, Zach. So he has a possibility if everything works out right. Like you said, top five, top six, maybe. That he does. I think there's a, a wealth of possibilities, especially with the aggressive racing that we've seen up front. Even when pit stops happen, I still don't think you'll see much separation with these drivers because I think a lot of them are going to pit together and want to be pitting together so they don't see that separation between each other. And that could be the big separating difference, though, is those pit stops. So we'll see. Can Tyler Dingler nail that? Or does he have trouble? Or do others in front of him have trouble? So that's the question at hand. But see the 7 of Cedric Hunter here. Aaron Kralik, Mark Morales, 
right here running back in the 13th position in farther. These guys just trying to rebound from some incidents tonight. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, we had uh, Cedric Hunter, unfortunately, uh, old tire spin around and had the big massive wreck at the beginning of the race. He has rebounded back, got that Hello Kitty uh, truck fixed up. So he's bouncing back and, you know, we talked about Eric Prolick, uh, Aaron Prolick, you know, what, a handful of laps he goes at? You know, he was having such a great run and unfortunately he got tied up into an incident and now he's back here battling with Cedric Hunter, Christian Wilson, and uh, Joshua Conado. These guys all battling back here about 11th on back, but our leaders still side by side. Ali Fonseca being able to get to the inside of the 15 once again. And here comes Jared Talmadge to push the 15. And this racing up here has just been must see TV, Robert, I must say, because these guys just cannot seem to find any time to not be side by side. As now Forbes, he's took advantage of a little bit of stack up. He goes to the inside of the 10 of Talmadge. Yeah, you get in and out, in and out, side, 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 side. Now you'll see the 10's going to get the run off the top, and then the 11's going to duck behind him, grab him into the draft. So we bet that's what we've been seeing almost all night there, Zach. You know, you just can't get that run on the inside that, you know, you get it going entering and mid-corner, but when you try to exit, the truck just wants to push out, and that truck on the high side, Got, got the better run and better position as we have Danny Cochran now looking over John Ford. And with this, it's stacked up this whole group up front. Man. And and look who's on the tail end of this group, Robert. The 10, uh, I mean, sorry, in 10th position, it's the 99 at Ethan Smith. So you got 10 drivers here, in my opinion, that all have a chance at victory here. So this is going to be a wild ending to this race. It's just when does the timing of those pit stops happen? Again, we're coming up at fear 50, complete lap 54, start lap 55. I think pit row could technically start to open up here a little bit, but it looks like Forbes into the outside wall there off of turn number three. Does Garcia have a chance here to look inside? Doesn't look like he will. Looks like he'll lift and just hold on to that position for this time being. Yeah, he uh, he lifted a little bit, and he gave John Forbes a little bump, and you can see how much separation that has. You know, from there, he just pushed him right up to Danny Cochran, but... You're talking about pit stops here, Zach. We're at 55. Pit stop has opened up here for these guys. And now the question is, is when do they pit? That it is. And I, I think if you're going to be aggressive, it's now. If you're going to be somewhere in the middle of that range, it's probably going to be around 58 is going to be more of that safe window to hit. But you might see others stretch it. You might even see a few, such as the likes of Cedric Hunter, farther back there in 11 to hit 17 laps ago a long ago with uh, Justin Campbell. They can stretch it about another 15 laps. That's going to take them into that realm of getting to about lap 70. So that'll put them in an interesting ballpark to see if they want to stay out and maybe catch a quick caution. But, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot to ask for for sure. But here we go. Side by side, Cochran and Forbes. These two have been battling for a long time tonight. And they're back at it again as Cochran going to throw the block down the long Pennsylvania back stretch. And he is going to be able to hold on to that position for now as the 11 looks to the outside. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen out there, if you're not liking what you're seeing here at the ISRC Truck Series, it's great racing as you've seen tonight, but there is rivalries out there. And you can see it on the track where they're, 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 they're hitting each other, they're moving each other, but they're not wrecking each other. So that's good rivalry in my personal opinion that you see this kind of stuff so congratulations to the drivers and uh you know every once in a while you'll have that bad race where you run into somebody and you know you have the attitude it is what it is but you know we also have a trend going on here at the isoc truck series too zach is uh you know when we get 10 under 10 to go normally we see a yellow will we see it tonight it very well possibly could happen, and that's why I think the likes of Cedric Hunter and some of the others could look to stretch as possibly as long as they could go on fuel because it's, it, it, you know, I think that's your only shot if you're someone back there to catch some type of a yellow flag. But we'll see um, who likes to do what, but others up front still not yet electing the pit here. Lap 57 to come by here and complete. 
the start lap 58 and will be 23 to go this time by. All right, well, all the fans we do have out there watching that are not actually racing right now. Um, if you are out here racing and in the trucks, what, what would you make your pit stop? Let us know in chat. Well, you know, lap 50, lap 55, lap 60. What would you do? What would be your strategy as we're watching? Uh, what is that back there? Uh, Tyler Dingler looking like he's going to let Ethan Smith go and buy him, and he's going to he's going to fall in place. He said, "Ethan, you're a little faster than me. Take that position, and hopefully, I'll pass you when we make my pit stops." But right now, we still got Danny Cochran all over that ten machine, trying to make that pass on the inside. Um, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. You can see he's just getting pinched off, and he can't carry that momentum coming out of the turns. Just not able to find that momentum. But for Cochran, this is great scenes from him because he was racing Forbes not too many laps ago. Now up to the back over Thomas and challenging him. So it shows that too has some staying power here in this little bit of a longer run that we've had now. I tell you who's coming though, Justin Campbell, those fresher tires. He's up to the eighth position, only 1.8 back from our leaders. Yeah, yeah, he's just right behind here, too, running in eighth position. Like you said, he's on a stint of 21 laps um, on his tire set compared to the top seven that's on 33 on their stint. So he's got better freshies right now here, and uh, he's just saving his tires, Zach. Um, Will this all work out for him? Because, let's see here, how far can he push this thing? You know, he can go a little bit longer than these guys, for sure. He can go about another 10 laps compared to what these this group up here could do, in my opinion. But my, my question is, he's got to, I think, just use these tires to his advantage right now and try to get as much time right now before these other drivers pit. That's got to be his advantage because he can make up some time and pit a little bit later even than these drivers he'll have more tire advantage even at the end right right and as long as knock on wood we don't get that other word that we don't like to say too much um, it, it might be a good game plan for him because then he doesn't have to try to save tires he can go full board and see how many uh, positions he can pick off that is really be very interesting to see how many the drivers can or the likes of Campbell can pick off here but 16 of Kanata. They say he's got a little bit of a battle back here for 12 with the 91 of Mark Morales. They're about nine seconds back from our leader of Vincent Sora. Oh, we got so many pit. Ooh, who's pit? Uh, like Cedric Hunter. Hunter. Tyler Dingler. Very, very interesting. So Tyler Dingler looks to be the first driver to hit pit road here on the green. And I like this call from Tyler Dingler, who was up in that other group. So. We'll see how he can hold on to them, but right now, 20 to go. Pit road's going to be busy, oh. I think, next time. By center, big slide into his box. Oh, now he just hit the inside pit wall. Oh, man, Ooh. he's all jacked. He's uh, he's had a rough night, Robert, with uh, <laughs> just the way it played out for him. Started with great a great run, you know, being third in qualifying. And I actually expected a lot from him with being Pocono being one of the better tracks, but... This seems as they mishaps his pit road's busy. Vincent Soro leads down the group of them, and John Forbes almost spins out as it's pretty much all top eight coming in. Uh, well, here it goes, 20 to go, 19 to go. And like you said, Zach, they're all kind of come in now and make the pit stop. So now we've got the whole shuffling going on here. As uh, we'll see here, like you said, we've got Vincent Soro sliding into the box. Oh, oh okay, he just made it in. Just <laughs> He almost overshot his pit stall. That was perfect for Vincent Sora. does not want to lose the lead to the likes of iPhone Sacred here through the sequence of pit stops. But here's the 10 of Tomich. He stays out one extra lap. I think he has to come in this time by. He can't lose too much time. He needs to be sure to be able to be locked onto the back of that pack of draft. Yeah, he doesn't want to lose that draft and he's going to enter. Hopefully here he's going to make it, you know, one more lap. Yep, looks like he's going to slow down. Looks like he's going to enter pit road. Hopefully he does it clean. And uh, that's one thing nice about Pocono pit road there. It's so wide to get in, Zach. You can really throw your vehicle down in there and slow down the pit road speed to get in because you got a lot of room to work with compared to some other tracks where it's very narrow. You know, surprisingly, 
with how much room in there really is to work there, it's actually very difficult with the line, where the line lines up. So that's that's one of the things. It, it's kind of deceiving. It's one of those ones that, oh, you think you can gain a lot of time. If you try to gain too much, though, it will bite you very quickly with speeding penalties. But definitely one of the easier ones to get on. But here you can see Vincent Sora. He's trying to get away from his teammate, Danny Cochran, and put gap between him and Ali Fonseca. And Vincent Sora has done an excellent job in those pit sequences. Looks like he's up to third position right now, and he's got Cody Reed that he just passed, but Cody has not made a pit stop yet, so you still got Martin Morales here, 25-lap stent. Thomas Green in the double zero. He has not made a pit stop yet. Let's see here. Cody Reed has not. Mason Cassidy has not. But like you said, Vincent Soar is trying to pull in that gap right now over his teammate, and it is... Oh, what are we looking at about... 1.4 gap 1.4 second gap and that should be enough to allow him not to have superior drafting over Vincent Sora ahead if Vincent Sora can just Whoa. put to better lap times he can grow that lead and look at the lap time he just put there Robert 53 51 that is the fastest lap we've almost seen all night long the only lap that beats that is the lap from Jared Thomas that put him on bowl. Which doesn't count in the race for fastest laps, even though it's the exactly. fastest lap. So, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that 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 is flying. And uh, uh we'll bring up the weather real quick here again and see it is five forty five in sim time. Um it's getting uh into the evening time. Look at the humidity all the way down to ninety one Zach. Air temperature and track temperature really has not changed. It stayed pretty uh, pretty same. Wind stayed the same. You know, it's been in between 14 to 20 miles per hour. But that humidity is, uh, you could just tell. Now, Ali Fonseca, 53.475, oh, Zach. And that has to do with the humidity going down. That it does. Humidity is going down. Wind also has dropped quite a bit. We've seen about a three to five mile an hour wind drop from earlier. So that could be helping a little bit more straightaway speed for these drivers. Maybe get a little bit of a headwind down one of these back straightaways. But I'll tell you what, Ali Fonseca, that lap was faster than any lap we've seen all night, even. So that was even faster than qualifying. So that just shows you right there as we see our race report here for tonight. As we've had five cautions, been somewhat of a tricky race so far. For 13 laps but nine lead changes that just shows you how aggressive it's been up front and it's been like that throughout the pack and that's what's led to a few of those cautions right and just so the viewers know out there um oh press, okay smith out there on youtube said he would have pitted on lap 60. interesting as now jared oh my god they got the fastest laps flying in now zach um, but what I was going to say is, is that lead change, everybody, that is at the start finish line. That is not how many times they did the lead change getting around to the start finish line. That's exactly right. Exactly. They, there's been more than just nine times that leads changed hands. It's just been at that finish line. But I'm just I tell you what, this the humidity is just making a huge difference at them with the, the speed that these trucks are pulling now. Oh, no doubt. There's definitely uh, that, and I think a little bit of the rains have been released. But these guys, they well, know yeah. it is go time, put time on each other, and build the gaps. We talked about a gap. Vincent Sword, Danny Cochran. Well, that gap is shrinking because you know why? The power of three trucks is more than one truck, folks. You put three trucks together here in Pocono, even though that 24 is not necessarily pushing the two, that air bubble is shoving that two forward. That's causing more speed. And they brought it within a second. And now Danny Cochran is going to actually start to get some pretty good draft. They will catch this 15 before this race is over. Right, and you can see right now they got these guys drafting here. And you can see Vincent Soar up there, that blue little machine up there. They are catching him and they're catching him fast. As we'll pop up over we'll here with Danny. And we can see right now at... Uh, if we can get the right camera angle. You can see Vincent Sora right there. He's uh he's catching him. And now once he gets that sniff of that draft with uh, 13 laps to go, Zach, this is going to become very interesting. What are these top four guys do? Because they're all going to be against each other. As we finally got 
somebody coming in the pit road and Martin has not made a pit stop there. Martin yet to pit the double zero. Thomas Green was that driver on pit road. 13 to go. Eight tenths of a second lead for Vincent Sora ahead of Cochran. And it was about a tenth of a second faster for Cochran last time by. This time it's going to be even more because he's got it within 0.7 now. That draft only grows for the two and the push from the 24 and 11 has allowed these, this group to catch up. What does Vincent Sora have in his bag to defend them off? I'm sure he has something. You've seen him dodge. A, oh, well, he needs to get through lap traffic first before he does anything there, Zach. And he does. Look at him go to the inside of Mason Cassidy, who's going to put the side draft on him here as he goes by. But oh. luckily, he gets clear, and this is going to allow Cochran now to dive to the inside. Does Cochran clear this 17? And But the 24 member teammates with the 17. So that 17 looking to help out that 24 just a little bit here with these passes. Okay, there it is. You can see it. The 17, the 24, they're going to try to team up, but they just couldn't link up good enough as uh, Ali Fonseca is going to grab and push uh, Danny Cochran right by them. And now we got John Forbes, and he's going to tow right against. And here we go. He really, That 24 pushed uh, Danny Cochran really up to the leader here, Vincent Sorozak. They have done a good job to gain this time. And, you know, the, the the amount they've gained, it does, you know, you know the lap time is different. They're, they're going faster with those drafts. I wonder if that's helped Vincent Sora save a little bit of tire, even with some clean air out front. But he's going to have his hands full. He's got his team in a Danny Cochran. He's going to have the 24 and possibly the 11. If you put four of the most aggressive drivers in this grouping, as we had a driver heavy into the outside wall, I'm unsure exactly what it was. It was a green car. But man, oh man, I think it might have been the 17 of Mason Cassidy even because that was a heavy lick for him down there in turn one. And yes, it was Cassidy as I think uh, he may have had some contact between him and Cody Reed. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, they did too. Yeah, Let's see here. And actually, uh, since these guys are bad and we'll go back there, but we'll see on the replay exactly here, Zach. What happened Mason Cassidy? Oh, 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 he's trying to... He's trying to do a something. He looks like he climbed his uh, his front clip there as the front end falls off and goes over the bumper and pretty sure it broke the right front as he's going to be trying to get that thing back to pit road. It didn't turn the tunnel turn, so hopefully Cassie can get it back to pit road because that might have been the caution that we've always talked about here at the end of ISRC is Vincent Sora. Now with this, he has got he's got friendly folks because he's got the two of Cochran right behind him. Fonseca about a half second back and six tenths of a second back is John Forbes. Uh, well, I say they're friendly. You say they're friendly, but I, it doesn't matter. Danny will pass his teammate, and I believe Danny would be the type or is the type that would battle his teammate for a win. You know, you, you help a teammate to a certain point, and then you're like, okay, well, you're by yourself, but right, that's not going to help. Danny Cochran just smashed the wall. That he did. That was a big hit on the wall. I'm actually take a look myself with a little bit closer angle that I have. But you know, these these bodies are resilient, Robert. And crazy to say, that too doesn't even show any damage. But that solid hit he had. He's lucky he hit so solid because it didn't really make any side of the car slap the wall. It was more even. But he did lose a bunch of momentum, and it looks it shows you when you lose momentum. Here comes the 24 on second to the inside, down into the tunnel turn. Yeah, it might have, but it still flatted that right side tack a little bit. So he, you can see, yeah, he's starting. His, his truck is not handling good at all. Big loss there for the two off of turn Whoa. number two. And now Forbes able to dive to the inside, but it's going to be Cocker back to the inside. And if these two bow too hard, they may allow the two up front to get away. Wow. Cochran not able to stay there with the side draft. They're now trying to latch on to the two up front. Wow. Yeah, now John Forbes, he's really got to try to get on to Ali Fonseca. He's still got his draft, but he's really got to get going here with eight laps to go, ladies and gentlemen. This top four is looking good. And we'll go back here. We got another battle here. Now we got Justin Campbell. We've got Ethan Smith. We got Samuel here battling. And it looks like Nick Crawford's stuck in the middle of this pack. Nick Crawford, like I said, stuck right here in the middle of this. And he's in the 17th position here. As he's actually a lap down to this grouping. So he's lost uh, a good bit to them. So 
tough break, tough race for Nick Crawford, who is looking to have a strong night here at Pocono after leading some of the opening laps of this race. But tell you what, with the battling that we saw with John Forbes and Danny Cochran, Robert, with just coming out of seven laps to go, that's allowed Fonseca and, and Sora to pull away. But now Talmadge closing into these two behind him, he may be able to look to get a top three. Yeah, I, I got, I, I want to get it out. I think he still got a chance for the top three here. You know, he, he, he won the pole. He was fast in practice. He got the pole here for tonight. And now he's just been out there running, salvaging what he can. But I think the main thing for him, Zach, is points. I think that's what he's looking at. He, if he can leave here, you know, with a little bit of bonus points and a good run, that's going to help him in the standings big time that it could and you know he's gonna hope to point himself in but i think at this point he's still thinking win is what he needs and he just sticks with that mentality get the and then you never know points might be enough when it comes around but yeah. he's definitely closing in with that one lap fresher tires here to this two and this 11 as they're about a second back from our leader vincent sora who was getting closed in by fonseca but fonseca lost a ton of time in the second half of the lap the Vincent Soros had just couldn't close down what he wanted. But remember earlier I said, too, you got to hit every turn fast. You know, don't mess up on a turn because you mess one lap up. It takes two laps to get back up to your, your rhythm to get another good lap. So you can't be wasting laps. You have to make sure you hit your marks, do what you can, take what the tires give you, and you know, hopefully it all pans out here. But... He's still a half a second behind. He's still got the tip of the draft, but we'll have to see if he can uh, pull up with this sort of with uh, going to be five laps to go here, Zach. I don't think he's got the tires. I think Vince is with the slower pace of not having anybody to draft with and just running by himself while they closed in. That just kept the tire tips down. And I think now as they've closed in, He's got the pace over them, and you can see the 24 of the nose just pushing on the exit of turn number one and just not able to gain the time he needs. But down the back straight, we still want to gain a little bit of draft to allow him to close in those crucial hundredths of a second. But anything is possible. Five to go, coming to four to go this next time by. Vincent Sora looking for another win here, Robert. And like I told you, this was one of his favorite tracks. This guy is deadly at Pocono. Oh, make sure everybody says hashtag Zach picks all the winners. <laughs> Cheater. I, I think that might be my third or fourth one now. You know, yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still at zero. <laughs> well, we got a long way to go still here at Pocono. I tell you what, four laps here at Pocono. Yeah. That is still 10 miles, ladies and gentlemen. This is a giant racetrack. It takes 54 seconds to get around here, almost upwards of 55. So this race ain't, race ain't over. We got time. In, it's ISRC. You never know what could yeah. happen with these drivers. We could see a random just incident. You know, people start to, when it gets the four to go, Robert, they're willing to take risks out here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've seen it multiple times. So we'll see if, uh, if that late break yellow comes out here tonight or if they can just run this out. With uh, we're getting ready to go with three to go here, Zach. Um, but I think right now we're not going to see too much more here. Vincent Sora has pulled out to a one second lead and uh, is just pulling away from Ollie now, unfortunately. But John Forbes is still trying to do something with Ollie Fonseca, but I don't know if he's going to have anything left in his tires, you know, to do anything with him. But I think the battle is just going to come down here to second and third and possibly fourth there maybe but Prince and Sora is long gone and this leader John Forbes having an excellent night here to go with a third place run if he can get second it'll be what he needs because he's trying to hold back Vincent Sora who has been on his way back back from this who if he does go on to win tonight here with three to go coming to two to go here very soon he will be able to four wins but he still doesn't have that points lead. he's missed one race compared to John Forbes and the others but 18 points coming back in, in here tonight. He's going to gain a little bit. A little but bit. Forbes, if he can get second, he can stop the bleeding just that much more. Yeah, just a little bit. Every position counts, right? I mean, 18 points behind is uh, Vincent Sora. 
John Forbes is running in third. Seconds better, of course, as he's going to duck it low in turn number one and see if he can get around Ali Fonseca. He's going to give it a shot with two laps to go here, Zach, and he's going to try, but he's just not going to get that run coming out. He, the truck just pushes too much, and he just he doesn't have the tires. Just not able to find the grip there to get alongside. Fonseca holding on for the time being. But Forbes definitely wanting to take over that spot. Jer uh, Jarrett Domage also closing the gap too for, for fourth. But it's Vincent Sora, the kid who's come back after winning the season one championship. People said, what is he going to do this season? So far, it's been domination as it's going to be the white flag here as it's going to be one more to go here at Pocono. What can Vincent Sora do here? to hold on for victory number four as they fight for second on back. Yeah, they're going to fight for second on back, for, but for Vincent Sora, like you said, Zach, all he has to do is hit his marks, and you can see he's just taking it easy right now um, and just finish the race out. Um, but like you said, the battle right now is going on right now. Actually, Campbell, Campbell and Danny yeah. Cochran are going to battle going down into the tunnel turn, right? And... Uh, Looks like he's going to be able to try to do it. He's got better tires than he does, but we'll see if he does. Nope, he's going to fall back in line. He's going to probably give it a shot, maybe coming out of turn number three here. But Vincent Sora is coming out of turn three, Zach, to take the victory. That it is. Vincent Sora looks up to the flag stand as he's going to take the checker flag for the spring break at the Tricky Triangle presented by Serenity Escape since. And what a win it was for Vincent Sora. He's going to say it's serenity tonight because it's win number four in the 15's back pocket. Congratulations, Vincent Sora. Everybody out there, give a thumbs up here tonight if you don't mind in chat. Let us know that you enjoyed tonight's show here with the ISRC Truck Series brought to you by what Zach just said here on Freaky Fast Broadcasting. So with that being said, we're going to wait here for him to burn it down, though, Zach. Uh, but like you said, he gained some more points there in that uh, left side of the column um, over John Forbes. And John Forbes had a, a decent run. He's going to bring it home here in third. Ollie Fonseca had a beautiful run here, bringing it home in second. Fourth place is going to go to Jared in that number 10. Rounding out your top five, Danny does hold off Justin to bring home fifth position. That he does. Campbell going to come sixth. Seventh for Ethan Smith. Eighth for Jesse Dorn. Ninth for Samuel Garcia. Tenth for Tyler Dangler. But this man right here, win number four, celebrating on the front straightaway here at the Pocono Raceway here in Pocono, Pennsylvania. What a win. What a victory and a dominant one in fashion coming from that ninth position on the starting grid. Had to battle hard all night. Held him off to the very end here to take the checkered flag for the fourth time this season. What a race that was here tonight at Pocono as he continues to burn it down here on the front straightaway. Me and Robert are going to step aside and we're going to get ready for our post race interviews tonight as we talk to our top three drivers and a spotlight driver here to hear their thoughts from the tricky train.
All right, we are back here, everybody. As it was a wild night here from the Tricky Triangle at Pocono for spring break at the Tricky Triangle here at the ISRC Larry Arts Productions Truck Series. But let's get a chat with our race winner four times this season. He's done it, and luckily tonight I was the one able to pick him to get it done. Let's hear from the 15 of Vincent Sora. Hey, Vincent, it's Zach up in the booth. You got a copy? I hear you. Well, but I tell you what, value effort tonight, able to come from that ninth starting spot on the grid and get the victory and get the fourth one of the season. First off, how does it feel? And, man, what a drive from ninth. Did, did you have any concerns with starting from ninth? Yeah, absolutely, especially being here at Pocono. Um, I was really hoping for a better starting spot. I, I really threw my lap away in pretty much every spot that I could have. Uh, I really did everything but wreck. I was just super slow and missed all my marks, but I I knew that it was going to be super tough to pass, and it was. It took me a, a while to start clicking off the passes, but I ran a little bit of practice uh, this week. Not not a ton, but enough just to get a feel on the truck, and I knew that I was going to be really quick on the long run because I was able to just manipulate the tires and uh, just get them in a comfort zone for me after about 15 laps, and I found that zone. Uh, and I, I knew if I got clean air, I'd be pretty tough to pass. And Ollie gave me a pretty big run for my money. I was definitely nervous there for for a little bit. And then again, when the, the guys started to catch me again in the draft, I, I thought I was going to have to have a rerun of last week and block my heart out the whole time. But thankfully, I was able to stretch the gap and just come home and get win number four. Now you were, Vincent. I tell you what, man, it was an impressive run. And, you know, we saw you come to pit road and build the gap coming out of pit road. Take us through the gap shrinking there. Was there concerns with them closing in with the draft starting to be powerful? Or did you feel like you had done enough work once they got there, you'd have the tire to hold them off? Yeah, I uh, I was fortunate enough. Usually I'm I'm always pretty disappointed in myself for my pit entries. and But tonight I nailed it on the yellow under the stage. And then again, under the green flag yellow, I was perfect on, on entry, into my box, out of my box. And... Uh, that's what I needed to build the gap. But yeah, like I said, I knew that they were going to have a huge head of speed. I mean, they were going—they were coming like a freight train in the draft. So I knew they were going to probably catch me. And I think if Danny didn't get up into the wall on the exit of three, I probably would have had to race a lot harder there because he was super quick. Uh, it just kind of sucked for him because it, it seemed like the guys behind him weren't close enough to give him a shot. Um, the draft when you're just behind one other truck isn't that, you know, impressive but when you have guys nose the tail you're just getting shot out of a cannon these crazy runs and you can't even defend against them you know i tried to block ollie a few times there and you just have so much speed going down these long straightaways that you can't block them uh so yeah i knew the draft was going to be strong and it was going to be something i'd probably have to contend with but fortunately i was able to you know just be smart and cool and build the gap it definitely was a uh interesting finish there vincent so congrats on that fourth victory but Two races left in the regular season, Lime Rock and Las Vegas. You came in here tonight. We're waiting for the points to get updated. But you came in here tonight 18 points behind John Forbes. So there was still an opportunity to, you know, get that regular season title, so to say. what What's your thoughts with these final two races? And do you feel like there's still a shot and a chance there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially if I just keep on doing this. I've got some really good tracks to end the regular season. I was really fortunate to have these tracks that, are on the schedule here coming to the end, but uh, I just need John to maybe not finish P3 every week or somewhere around there because, you know, the, even if I get a win, he's always just right there close enough to where I really don't gain that much on him. Uh, I think tonight the the big factor is that I got more a, a good bit more stage points than him, and I don't think he let a lap all night. And so I think bonus points are going to come in clutch here. It's kind of what I do best, just kind of nabbing these bonus points here and there. It's what I did in, in WSSR and over here the last time. So I just need to keep on being smart, get these good finishes, and close out the regular season. Well, Vinny, I tell you what, it was an excellent run tonight, pulling off that fourth victory. Congrats on it. And before we let you get out of here and go celebrate it with your team, anybody wants to send a shout out to? Yeah, everybody in the league. Uh, it was a super fun race, as always. I love racing these guys over here because I feel like. Some of the moves that we pull on each other wouldn't work in other leagues, but they work over here. Uh, so shout out to them. Shout out to Danny Cochran. This is a new paint scheme, and there's actually kind of a little uh, 
charm with new paint schemes and i seems like whenever i i get a new scheme i go out and win that first race with it so hopefully that luck doesn't get used up here um shout out to you guys for broadcasting my team at csr and uh everybody home watching thank you very much vincent congrats on your win and we'll catch you next week at lime rock thanks guys have a good one all right folks that was your race winner tonight of vincent sora what a drive it was for him to get out that fourth victory but in the driver he said that put up the most fight he felt like that's the man we're going to move to in second and what a drive it was he was our biggest mover tonight we'll talk to ali fonseca in the 24. hey ali and zach up in the booth you got a copy yeah guys what's up hey man well i tell you what ali what a fight tonight man started back in 18th biggest mover of the night able to pull off second and Man, really put it to our race winner tonight with quite the battle there through the middle part of the race. Take us through your battle, though, man, because you really had to climb through. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty interesting. Um, I definitely didn't get as much time to qualify tonight as I usually do. Um, so I wasn't surprised when I was starting near the rear. Um, that first yellow came out, and I think I gained like four or five spots. It happened right in front of me. Um, that was really scary, but we made it through thanks to Brandon. Um, and yeah, just kind of just slowly, methodically, you know, just letting the race come to us. I mean, we definitely caught a couple breaks early there that was able to help me get into that position. And then, you know, we came down pit road, um, early thinking, you know, stage points would be nice, but you know, we're here to win. We're already locked in. So that was what we elected to do. Um, and yeah, I mean, I was not expecting to, you know, be racing for the lead, especially with Vinny. Um, but for some reason, and I, I really don't have a lot of experience with this place. Um, but I could tell, especially off turn one, I was really good. I was doing something very different from some of those guys out there. And even, I don't know what it was, but turn one, I was getting massive runs. So I just kept on taking them and I, I kept on, you know, trying to ruffle his feathers, get around them and hoping that clean air would, would be, you know, would prevail. Um, and, you know, we swapped back and forth a, a couple times, but, uh, you know, ultimately that draft, man, with these trucks, um, it's tough to go anywhere. You really got to wait for the run to come to you and, and let the laps wind down before you really get to see any um, spreading of the field. So it was every single time I pass him, you know, Jarrett would just push him right back around me, you know. So at that point, it's just, all right, just save your stuff for what you got, you know, do what you can. Um, came down pit road. Uh, shot myself in the foot again on pit road. I got to clean up my pit road, man. Um, and uh, came out and thought with a little help, we might be able to run him down. But um, by the time I got around Danny, it was just uh, the right front had fallen off. He had the clean air. The draft was broke. And that was all she wrote. Well, I'll tell you what, man. It was a great fight from the 2014 for sure tonight at Pocono and really uh, put on quite the show for us there, battling for the lead up front. And was very very fun to watch for sure man so congrats on that ollie but we got two regular season races left as it's closing down to the end part of the season and you know you know this will be your second top five of the season with lime rock and las vegas how important do you think it is to carry this momentum so you can get set back up to try to go get in the final four once again oh uh, yeah absolutely um points is everything um you know i need to be higher up in the standings you know to get those extra points when they reset right um, so that's ultimately what the goal is going to be right now. Um, Lime Rock, you know, you guys know me with my road courses. I'm hit or miss. I usually can scruffle a top 10 at those places. Um, but I'm definitely going to be putting more of my focus into Vegas, even though nowadays it kind of races like a, a super speedway. So you just got to it, – it's tough, man. Um, you just got to take away what, what you know you can do um, and what you're capable of at tracks like these. Um, and – you know, it's always good. I, I you know, I, I was able to win a race right before the playoffs started last season. Didn't quite get it done tonight, but, you know, the momentum is everything going into the playoffs. And it's been a tough start to the season aside from winning the first race. So uh, glad to see that we're finally starting to get together and, you know, we'll be ready for the playoffs. Well, I'll tell you what, Ollie, it's going to be fun to watch in the playoffs, man. Congrats on second tonight. Before we let you get out of here, anybody wants to send a shout out to you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, just want to, first of all, I want to thank, um, Don Beatty. He's, uh, my new sponsor. Um, he is freaking awesome. He's actually, um, kind of a coworker of mine and, and he's just a great guy. So thanks for coming on board the truck, Donnie. I appreciate you putting your business on there for me. Um, it was really cool to finally get him up front and, you know, out where he belonged. Um, I want to thank my other sponsor, Larry, for everything he does for me personally, everything he does for the league. Um, you guys obviously for putting this on um i gotta thank my uh spotter crew chief brandon he did a phenomenal job getting me through those early cautions and those early wrecks that was really sketchy and uh, he definitely saved me 
Um, and of course, Mason and Cassidy and Justin Campbell, you know, we, we, we've been working as a team really well this season. And, and, you know, I think all three of us are going to make the playoffs. So that's the goal. That's what we're working towards. And I'm just really stoked about that. Um, and just my friends, family, everyone else who watches, I appreciate it. Congrats on the run, Ollie. And we will catch you next week at Lime Road, buddy. Thank you. All right, folks, that was your second place driver tonight of Ali Fonseca. Great run for himself. Like he said, first time he's been back up here since that win, the start of the season. It's really good momentum. He needs to try to go make another run for a championship in that 24 team. But we don't have our third place finisher tonight. John Forbes, unfortunately, he had to step away quickly after the race was over. But we're going to just go ahead and step down to our fourth place driver, Jarrett Talmadge, as he was able to start on pole position tonight and bring home a top five and in a very important position going into these final two races. Hey, Jared, it's Zach up here in the booth. You got a copy? Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, buddy. Great run tonight. Started from that pole position and kind of kept yourself in the top five all night long and got good points all night. So how does that feel to come out here with fourth after uh, quite the battle with everybody? Yeah, that uh, really good points day Um, in our charge for a uh hopefully a shot at the playoffs um it was really fun race um surprisingly for uh, Pocono um great racing with everyone up there I felt like I kept myself in the mix all night and uh I could have did a couple things better you know to have a shot at Vincent there at the end um probably not staying out that extra lap cost a lot more time than I had thought it was gonna but other than that it was a really good day that it really was and I tell you what Jarrett they put out the points here and it looks like you've moved your way up from 25th all the way to 20th. And I've done a little bit of math. It looks like you're going to be about 22 points back here with two races ago, Lime Rock and Las Vegas. First off, how you feel about Lime Rock with it being a road course race and Las Vegas lining up? Do you feel like those 22 points, you feel like it's within the possibility of that 10 to make the playoffs? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, we've made up so many points in, the short five, six races that I've done, I, I feel like we can make up 22 if we have things go our way. Lime Rock, I feel I've not touched it in the truck since they went there in season one, but I feel pretty confident. Um, not the greatest road course racers and, you know, the stock cars, but I'm hoping I could pull out a top five, top 10 there. And then, you know, I won Vegas back in the start of this league. So um feel pretty confident about that too. I think, uh, if it is 22 points, I think we definitely have a shot. I definitely think you're going to have a shot for sure, Jared, man. It's definitely been fun to watch you close the gap in, and you never know, maybe a victory here in these next two races. You don't even have to worry about points. So congrats on the fourth place finish here tonight. Before we let you get out of here and go get prepared for Lime Rock, anybody want to send a shout-out to? Yeah, shout-out to you guys for putting on the broadcast every week. Uh, everyone who runs the league, and shout-out to my teammate Thomas. I know he didn't have the greatest of races. Uh, got spun out there early, but... I think he recovered back for a top 15, so that's good for him. Well, Jarrett, again, congratulations on the top four. Best of luck heading into these next two weeks, and we'll catch you at Lime Rocks next week. Thank you. All right, folks, that was your fourth place finisher tonight, Jarek. Jarek Talmadge, as he started from pole position, brought home the fourth place spot, and like I said, gained five spots and points and is within 22 of that cut line. So it's going to be quite the next two races for him to watch out because he's got speed galore for sure. So now we're going to head to our uh, spotlight driver as it is going to be the 99 of Ethan Smith as uh, he had quite the run tonight, uh, you know, coming back from his hiatus 13th to 7th. Let's hear from the 99 Ethan Smith. Hey, Ethan, it's Zach up in the booth. You got a copy. I got you. Well, man, great run tonight. You know, I, I'll take what you said pretty much in the general chat from Discord. You're running, you know, near the tail end of this field for majority of the night, but able to bring it home in seventh, Ethan. What a what a job by you, man. Take us through it. Well, just kind of a, a call on the uh, right before the stage. Anticipated another first lap wreck, and sure enough, first corner, there was a wreck and paid off. Allowed me to stay in the top five at the time. Um, I obviously pit took tires, so I went a little bit further back in the field, but you know, I'm not just cause of where I came in, I'm not looking for points or anything. So I, I'm just trying to race with everybody else, but I'm not being super aggressive. So I was, I was, I don't know how I went from last to seventh, but I'm happy where I finished. Definitely a great run, man. And, you know, uh, you know, to hit on that, you know, you're like, you say, you're not racing for points. You know, this is your 
third race back and you know no no real pressures there you know is the rest of the season just a build up for the next one because how do you feel like it's been getting back used to racing all these guys well, i enjoy being back um it allows me to really push the boundaries on maybe two tires here maybe a fuel strategy there you know and i always push the boundaries before i mean you guys know two tires i've done it multiple times um this is finally out of the three races i've been back i haven't been destroyed i got to finish this one um and then i didn't think that was possible because i got spun on lap one during that accident uh, i thought that was it um the freedom's nice this is this is just for fun you know i'm not trying to race anybody hard at all i mean I don't think I've really had any altercations with anyone on track, bumping anybody, nothing like that. Um, but it is definitely a preparation for next season. And it's going to be, you know, right now I'm racing how I was season one at the beginning of the season, very passive. But as soon as next season starts, I promise you, you the me that used to be out there on track, you'll see that again. Well, I'll tell you what, Ethan, we can't wait to see it, man. It's been gl- really good to have you back and we're definitely good to see you back out there on the racing surface. And before we let you get out of here, anybody want to send a shout out there too? Cause we know a lot of people watch for yourself. Uh, any friends, family watching um, you guys putting this on uh, Danny for the scheme. Um, and yeah, I'm just, uh, you guys won't see me next week, but I'm ready to continue on through the playoffs. All righty, Ethan. Well, man, congrats again on the great finish in the seventh tonight. And hopefully we're talking to you throughout these final few weeks. Thank you. All right, folks, that was our spotlight driver here tonight. The 99 of Ethan Smith with a seventh place finish on his third race in return. And like you said, it's the first race he's got to finish, really. He's gotten involved in some incidents and gotten taken out of the the first two races he was in with some heavy, heavy damage. So I'm sure he's just glad to see the checker flag this time. And hey, top seven finish. That's something to build on for that 99. And like you said, wait until next season. It's going to be fun to watch. But that was our post-race interviews. We're going to pop up our unofficial race results so you can see where all these drivers played out tonight here from the Pocono Raceway is It was 80 laps of straight madness there through that middle portion. Some of the best races we've seen all season as Vincent Sora takes home that fourth victory of the season. And Ali Fonseca going to take home that second place position. Third is going to go to John Forbes. Fourth is going to be Jarrett Talmadge. Fifth is going to go to Danny Cochran. Sixth is going to be the uh, nine of Justin Campbell. Seventh is going to go to Ethan Smith. Eighth is going to go to Jesse Thornock. Ninth is going to be Samuel Garcia. And rounding out the top ten here is Tyler Dingler. And Robert, as we look through the rest of that order, definitely some uh, tough nights for a few guys that we expected to be up front, you know, that had good qualifying runs. Most definitely. Nick Crawford, 17th position. No, he was, uh, what, one, one lap down. Cody Reed, one lap down. Uh, let's see, Aaron Krolick, he had great running here tonight. He's going to come out with the uh, 21st position. Um, and then we go down through and look at the rest. GT, Anthony Gaudio, these two guys here, 44 and 48 laps, are going to finish uh, down and finish in the 24th and 25th position. So that is going to be your final unofficial results of tonight's event. But Zach, as we talk about that, Man, we're down to two more races, right? And playoff points and every position now means a lot. So, you know, these guys are going to have to see what they can do the next two weeks to try to get, you know, point their way in. If you, if you don't think you can get a win, you got to focus on, on the point set. You're, you're exactly right. you gotta you got to pick one of the two, in my opinion. You know, I, I look at someone like Jarrett, you know, who finished fourth here tonight. Huge gains for him in points. That was an excellent job from him. Um, again, unofficially, we'll see where he, how far back unofficially he is from all the situation we come into next week. But you know, I, I you know, I think for him, he's kind of got to go almost the route of try to go win because he has that speed. Where some others, I think, you don't need to go for that home run park out of the hit. You know, where you're only a couple points out. You need to go for that strategy that's right. 
guaranteed. Maybe get those stage points. You know, yeah. five, six stage points like some of these guys stole there at the beginning of that of that of the end of that stage. Those could be the points that you need to come back around and get you into those playoffs these last two. Oh, agreed. And that was huge. What they did on the stage when they stayed out and that yellow came right out after that. That was just that was just perfect for them. It, every, the cards fell perfectly straight for them, ladies and gentlemen. So when you go back and watch this uh, stream again, um, you know, you'll be able to see it. But with that being said, Zach, we're going to get ready to get out of here. But we do got our upcoming schedule here tonight, Monday night. We just seen uh, these guys here at Pocono. Tomorrow, we uh, head to Racing BRB, last race of the season. They crown a champion tomorrow um, here on Freaky Fast Broadcasting as we go to Phoenix. That's going to be a very interesting race that we got going on there. Wednesday nights, well, they're off right now preparing for their next season, which will be season nine on Wednesday night. And they will return, you know, in, in a couple of weeks here, Zach, in about five weeks or so. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday night. And then we have Thursday night Doghouse uh, Cup Series here. Um, they are going to be heading to Texas. Um, so, And it's going to be the new configuration of Texas. So that's going to be interesting to see, though. But th that's our uh, upcoming schedule here uh, this coming week, Zach. Oh, very, very good schedule coming up. Definitely a, a champion being crowned tomorrow night. That's going to be fun. Definitely going to be tuning in myself to see you guys crown that champion there. The Thursday night, of course, Doghouse. I mean, that league has enough to speak for itself with its open league, open setup racing. It's been fantastic. And yeah. Can't wait to wait to call that there with Sam Dyer on Thursday night. So we're gonna we're gonna have a fun time with that one. But what a fun time it was here tonight, Robert. I tell you, uh, you know, just to get my final thoughts out of the way here. Congrats to Vince Sora. You know, amazing job on getting his fourth victory of the season. You know, I love the fact that I was able to pick him for it too. So we'll, we'll rub that in the salt in the wound of uh, <laughs> Sam and Robert. But you know, we'll take that and we'll move on the line rock next week. Where and maybe he probably will be the favorite heading into there too, Robert. So it's gonna be interesting to see who can take that on. But if you're not busy next week, make sure you hit the subscribe button, that bell notification, because you're gonna want to know when we go live next week for Line Rock. It's going to be wild. Again, though, also shout out to all the sponsors here at ISRC, Layer Arch Productions, Hot Lap Threads, Morecast, and also Serenity Scape Sense. Um, amazing job by everybody here at ISRC. And Robert, it's been a, a fun time to see it all play out here. That's right. Tonight's sponsor you can find down in the link in the descriptions below of this YouTube video. But with that being said, we are going to head off. Get ready for tomorrow night. Our next Freaky Fast Broadcasting event is going to be with uh, the BRB Racing League as we crown a championship driver tomorrow at Phoenix as we go live at 8.50. That will be our next Freaky Fast Broadcasting. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say here at Freaky Fast, let's get freaky, let's get crazy, let's get freaky nuts. Until next time, God bless everybody. Love you all. Peace out.